resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's Alex Jones. Death is the great equalizer. Think about that. I know I do. Living each day as if it could be your last. There was a big report out in The Guardian a few days ago that I meant to cover. In fact, will you guys repull that for me? Thank you. Asking why are people so deathly bored in all the different statistics and measurement systems that governments have in the West? And it's because the human population is being removed from its natural environment. And an artificial environment is being built to dehumanize us and to blind us. And that is the social engineer's own admission. The modern world has a lot of advances and a lot of positive things about it, but also has a lot of side effects that the globalists themselves have been exacerbating and building whole economies of scale around them. And there is a spectator-like mindset that has been inculcated into people where they don't have any basic drive any basic push for innovation they think of it as work and i've often likened that to thinking it thinking of breathing as something horrible you're forced to do because there's a labor to it. You look at the extreme examples of that, people that weigh over a 1,000 pounds and can never get out of their bed, that live cloistered in tiny apartments with their body's bulk filling up a third of the space. Now, that's an extreme example, but that's where society and humanity is going. And we're taught all these false systems of education and false systems of supposed intelligence. When every culture knew that real intelligence sprung forth, obviously from native genetics, but also from the environment and the test and the trials that one was put through. And so every culture would put their young and others through test and through trials of adversity to unlock their potential. And you look at the modern world, the nanny state, it's all about never allowing anyone to have a basic rite of passage to move up the hierarchy of the human experience and to unlock the data, the knowledge stores that are held in your compressed race memory that the media and the scientists called instincts, but know full well is only the surface of a very deep ocean of knowledge. I know how to defeat the new world order. They know how to suppress humanity. What I'm here to do is reverse that. The question is, do you really want to live? Do you really want to be alive? Do you really want to transcend tyranny? I'm Alex Jones. Big broadcast lined up. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald J. Trump swept five states and almost every county. Ted Cruz, last time I heard, only got two delegates. And so they are on Fox News and CNN declaring his victory. And they have the entire Republican leadership like a bunch of demonic parrots hopping around repeating the same things over and over again. That they are not even going to give him the nomination if he gets the 1238. Or that they will create a third party to scully things and hand it to Hillary Rodham Clinton. If you ever had any doubt about what an incredible group of organized criminals the Republican leadership is, you now have another stunning example. Now, according to the Republican Party's own rules, they rewrote in the 19, 
76 that is as crooked as a dog's back leg that they never tried to implement. But even according to their crooked rules, Ted Cruz is now eliminated completely. Infowars.com has the Gateway Pundit article that shows the party rules, screenshots of it, and breaks down the fact it's also up on DrudgeReport.com. And we're going to be breaking down the latest developments on that front today. We also have the Trump insider, Roger Stone, joining us in the third hour. David Knight hosts the fourth hour. And Matt Bracken, enemies foreign and domestic, will be joining us with his thesis and analysis dealing with the fact that these millions of Muslims coming in, upwards of 80% being military-age men who had been failed invaders of Syria out of Saudi Arabia and other nations, are coming here to plan a massive sneak attack, sleeper cell attack, on the lines and scale of the Tet Offensive in Vietnam. And he's a long-serving Navy SEAL going back to the 1980s. Um, and I'm not criticizing any of the Navy SEALs, but he wasn't just a door kicker, but higher level and a planner, a really smart guy. And I'm going to go over some of his uh, background as a constitutionalist. He's going to be joining us, Matt Bracken, uh, highly recommended from Stuart Rhodes and others at Oath Keepers. He's going to be popping in to break down the parable of the snake with us today. And that is in the second hour. You'll definitely want to stay with us for that. We're also going to ge uh, get into an article he wrote, Burning Down the House in 2016. So we're going to be covering that today. That said, there is another big false, artificial, synthetic foe controversy being pushed right now, and that, that is that Donald Trump hates women. And they really have seized on this. How dare him? And, oh, my gosh, it's a hate crime. He said Hillary would get 5% of the vote if she was like the other 14 people that ran for the Republican nomination. And the average was they were getting 2 to 5%, many of them. That if she wasn't a woman, she's so untalented, so boring, so goofy, also so corrupt, that she wouldn't get 5% of the vote. I absolutely agree with that astute statement. I mean, Jeb Bush could never get above 5 6%. They're establishment candidates. I think that's the most dead-on statement I've heard from Trump in a long time of a lot of dead-on statements. I mean, that is dead-on. It's a gimmick that she's a woman. But Barack Obama, he's a pretty good speaker, pretty good uh, teleprompter reader. Uh, goes on a lot of shows, makes jokes and stuff. I mean, you know, he's a lot easier to watch than Hillary, and I'm sick of looking at him. But how about the argument that we just don't want to see this evil witch for four to eight years? I mean, get out of our lives and all your robot talking where, hello, I'm Hillary Clinton, just staring at her teleprompters. But the way they seize on all language now is hurtful and bad. Of course it's a gimmick that she's a woman. They admit that's the gimmick. And then next it'll be a gay president, and then it'll be a albino president, and then it'll be a foreign president. It's total gimmick. Like, oh, the new iPad's coming out. It's never been this color before. It's only three times what the last version is. It, it's just all gimmicks. Gimmick after gimmick. So let's play this clip where Trump came out and said, if Hillary Clinton were a man, she would get less than five percent of the vote and remember this is in his victory speech last night as he gets ready to go after hillary and as he says look i'm the guy i have the majority of the delegates i'm going to get the 12 38 game over he's going to just totally sweep now out in the west and other areas roger stone's coming on he's very very confident The question is, will they try to assassinate Trump or will they roll out a bunch of fake scandals that won't actually bring him down with the public, but will create enough of a doubt when the convention starts in the public's mind to make it okay for some people to accept the Republicans coming out and saying, he's so evil, he's so bad with this new scandal, we're just going to not allow him 
to have any of the delegates. The superdelegates are going to block that, violating their own crooked rules that themselves are a fraud, and steal the election from Trump. Do they have the chutzpah, the arrogance, the hubris, or, or is it the fear to do something so reckless and dirty? We don't lose either way. They show themselves and openly cancel elections and install people or, or, or have a fake synthetic plastic race. It'll just devastate the power structure that much worse. But if Donald Trump gets in, we've got to totally stay on him to really carry out the nationalist, constitutionalist, pro-American programs that will actually make this country roar back to com just amazing prominence. So that's a big question. Uh, but here is Trump in part of his uh, victory speech last night as he dominated five states, more than he's even dominated any previous states, including New York. Just a landslide. A landslide. That should be the headline today. Landslide. But really, that hasn't been out there. There's a headline up on Drudge. We obviously want to follow this and, and have our writers cover it. AP reporting, Trump's big speech test his foreign policy and style. Donald Trump's highly anticipated foreign policy speech today, the 27th, will test whether the Republican presidential frontrunner knows for his raucous rallies and eyebrow-raising statements can present a more presidential persona as he works to unite the GOP establishment behind him. Trump is expected to outline a vision for U.S. foreign policy that focuses on rebuilding alliances, charting a new course with Russia and Iran, and tackling the threat posed by the Islamic State, according to Walid Ferris, one of the Republican frontrunner's policy advisors, and it goes on from there. And the big debate two weeks ago internally inside Planet Trump, headquarters uh, in New York, was does he do this speech without a teleprompter or without notes? And reportedly, Trump overruled uh, some of his new advisors and his older advisors and said, I'm going teleprompter free, which is what I know Roger Stone advised him that day in New York to do. So you've got uh, Paul Manfort, you've got the other fellow that's been in all the trouble and stuff they've been going after him and then of course you've got stone but i mean you can't say anybody's the main advisor to trump because trump does whatever he thinks is best which is very refreshing but he also says some things i disagree with like the iphone business and the rest of it but let's go ahead and play the clip well i think the only card she has is the woman's card she's got nothing else going and frankly if hillary clinton were a man i don't think she'd get five percent of the vote the only thing she's got going is the woman's card. And the beautiful thing is women don't like her, okay? And look how well I did with women tonight, okay? That is an, such an incredibly true statement from end to end. Women don't like her. She's not doing very well in national polls when you really talk to women across the board. And he's, she's not doing well with uh, black Americans. She's not doing well with wealthy liberals who are pro-America. That was been in Politico. There's a whole class of those folks that are entrepreneurial. She's just not doing well anywhere. Hispanics voted for him in a whole bunch of primaries against the other Republicans. 48, 52 percent, you name it. Those are the numbers. Depending on the state. I mean, that was back when there were six or seven candidates in in places like Nevada. They've got a big problem. A big problem. And the South likes him. Remember Cruz showing his miscalculation going... I mean, the ultimate Yankee from Canada. <laughs> I guess that's a beyond Yankee. I love Canadians, by the way. It's just that it is weird to have this guy that rode into town on a moose, uh, you know, uh, trans ship from, from Cuba or wherever he came from, and he's running around saying, yeah, we don't like those New Yorkers and their values up there. You mean all the globalists that have come in and taken over New York and have high taxes on the rest of the New Yorkers feeding on them? You mean those people? Oh, by the way, those people voted for Cruz. The only places he won were in the most establishment, blue blood areas of New York City. So 
Cruz got the, the New Yorkers that he was claiming Trump was with, and Trump got everybody else. So this miscalculation that Hispanics or African Americans or, or, or women aren't going to go for Trump is a load of moose manure directly from the establishment Republican Democratic Party and then regurgitated back out after he had a full meal of it, uh, which he craves, Ted Cruz. Yes, it's true, folks. Ted Cruz is a known connoisseur of moose manure. Okay, I'm going to stop the jokes. We're going to get serious on the other side. Big broadcast. Yeah, and the renegades aren't a bunch of red flag waving trendies worshiping Bernie Sanders. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers on record cooked up communism, took down Russia, and installed that nightmare. And we owe Russia an apology for allowing our elites to use our money and our treasure to do that. Then Russia was set up as this engine of absolute evil, along with communist China that's still operating, to run around and murder and enslave their own people and their neighbors. That's how the globalists operate. The globalists also wound up and created Adolf Hitler. Now, they know there's massive populist movements forming around the world, and they're doing everything they can to try to stop them. Because once sovereign nations fall and countries are brought under deep debt to the globalists, terms of surrender and capitulation can be dictated directly to those governments. What we are seeing is 21st century warfare. Speaking of warfare coming up, amazing headline. Russia starts trial of new electromagnetic warfare system. Think Tank outlines possible scenarios for Russian collapse. We're going to get to both these articles. Pro-ISIS group hacks Michigan Church's website, threatens to enslave its women. They'll probably get a Gloria Steinem Award. Only 53%. Only 53 police agencies participating in national push for use of force statistics. We're going to be going over that. That's just some of the news unfolding at that level. We're also going to get to an incredibly important story that ties into what's happening with the economy. Report. DPS kept millions intended for pensions. And that's the... Detroit pension system, turns out somebody's robbed it. Well, get ready for that to happen all over the country. It's already happening. And while we're busy fighting over transgendered bathrooms, the globalists are running away with the kitchen sink. And I'm going to tie that into this report that's up on Infowars.com. Believing in two genders is a hate crime now under police investigation at U.S. Catholic College in Los Angeles. And they actually have the students saying, yes, we want people arrested who have been heard saying there's only two genders for, quote, denial of transgenderism. So, so you've heard of the French Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition. You've heard Monty Python jump out and say, the Spanish Inquisition. Well, it was no joke if you went through it and got killed uh, because you didn't uh, toe the line with the local constabulary. A lot of people just used it as a system to persecute whoever they wanted. It was a reign of terror that went on for hundreds of years off and on and really spurred the whole move for the Protestant Reformation uh, and, and what Martin Luther did, uh, not Martin Luther King, the first Martin Luther, folks, if you're a new listener. And now with a straight face, the college and others are like, yes, denial of transgenderism is illegal and a hate crime. So it's like, Denial of Christ is a hate crime will burn you at the stake. But they didn't just burn you at the stake for denial of Christ. Your neighbor would say, I heard him claim he didn't love Mary. And if they didn't like you, they'd just take you, burn you at the stake, torture you to death, kill you, and take your property. And, of course, it turned out the real Satanists most of the time were actually the torturers who love every night raping and murdering women in their torture dungeons and you know, all the rest of it. And, and this is just what any religion or any system can turn into. But now the Jesuits, it actually says in the article, are the most, quote, liberal out there. Yes, that's very liberal. Arrest someone if they say there's two sexes. Hey, what if they were wrong? What if they said there was one sex or no sexes? Or what if they were schizophrenic? I mean, you're allowed to have your free speech, right? No, no, no. Arrest them. Arrest them. No free speech. 
This is the mindset that we're dealing with. So I'm sorry, I'm just mentioning articles coming up. I, I started getting into that one. Uh, it ties into this uh, shocking undercover video up on Infowars.com shows how Target really feels about men in girls' bathrooms. And it's the communal open bathroom where, you know, it's a bunch of stalls. And boom, they say, go right on in to the man who's clearly a man. Anti-Trump protesters pepper spray little girls in the face. A Paul Joseph Watson article on Infowars.com. And it shows what happened out in Anaheim. And they just won't let the pro-Trump people protest. And most of them are Hispanic, by the way. There's a Hispanic lady with her cute little kids. And uh, other Hispanic people just run over a big bully and sprays them. Sprays them because you're not allowed to do that. I mean, Trump's a racist, so you deserve to be attacked because you're dehumanized. I mean, you can't say there's only two sexes either because we're going to have to arrest you because we're liberal. The Spanish Inquisition. Well, now it's the Tranny Inquisition. Chop it off or you'll be burned at the stake. We're on the mark. You know, I need to make a bigger deal out of uh, Chuck Norris coming out against geoengineering and saying there's a secret program to poison us and the soil with aluminum dioxide. And then he links to mainstream articles basically admitting it in World Debt Daily three days ago. That's a big deal. Because Chuck Norris is a smart guy, very influential, and it just shows how mainstream this has gotten, that it's Merle Haggard and Prince and just everybody. And, and lay people that aren't even listeners talk about the chemtrail flu and folks know what's going on. And then they always play this childish game. They go, those are ice crystals. Uh. Or if you are warning people about vaccines, they go, it's called science. And you, you take a little bit of what's bad and your body learns to beat it. And then you, you, then you don't die. It's called science. And we're like, yeah, we know. Have you read the insert? Do you know it's part of eugenics and they're adding things to it? Like they add Trojan horses to your so-called iPhone or your smart car? Yes, we know. It's You're against smart meters in your house? It's called air conditioning and heating. It's called science. It's why you don't freeze to death in the winter or boil to death in the summer. We go... We're not against thermostats. We don't want them that are designed as a government snooping probe to control our temperature, gouge us, and hijack all the data in the house in an admitted global government plan, which is now admitted. They, there was an article on Monday, and there's all these top science journals are coming out with t heads of universities. You know, head electrical engineers coming out and saying, it's actually true. Everything's wired together and it allows hackers in and governments and it doesn't even work well and it's terrible and we need to do something about this. This is a horrible uh, and everything's being tracked. The CIA director four years ago was in Wired Magazine saying all your appliances are going to have smart tech. We're listening and watching you. <laughs> These are all little, you know, in your face jokes. in-your-face jokes. Of course, vaccine technology is real and works. And if there's something super deadly killing millions of people, I want it. But I want a cost-benefit analysis, and I don't want national security secrecy over it in Europe and the United States with every major government caught jacking them with sterilants and other compounds. Comparende! I want a thermostat I can control remotely, but I don't want it jacked in to a government imperial probe droid attached to the side of my house like a like a spider. This is a takeover. Okay, I'm ranting. Meanwhile, I was telling them about this during the break, and they're like, seriously? And I was like, no, read Paul Joseph Watson's article. We're at a major Catholic university in California. Someone heard someone, and then some faculty person said, there's a bunch of articles on this, newscast, you name it. Someone said there was two genders, and everyone's panicking in fear, and they're running around calling for the arrest for whoever is a denier of transgenderism, close quote. Just, just saying you don't say it exists is, is hurtful, and, and the police came, and yes, they want to arrest whoever in their weird interpretation of a hate law. 
This is the Spanish Inquisition. So imagine just running around going, uh, 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 we're looking for, we're not sure, it's, uh, help us. We saw, we saw someone chalked Trump 2016. It's a hate crime. So they had to call in 50 psychologists at one university alone. And we have the video where they see a Trump sign, they see, um, and, they, and they go, ah, ah, I'm hurting, it hurts, it hurts me. Ah. And then the police come, oh my God, it hurts. Remember the videos that the Veritas Project shot this year? It was like eight different universities. And they, they go in as students and they go, I found a pocket constitution. These are places where people have been arrested. Students for handing them out are fined. And they come and they go, I found this constitution. It's scary. I don't like it. We had to do a master video of them all crying and freaking out. And the uh, assistant team goes, oh, my gosh, that's so scary. Let me take that for you and throw it away. And, of course, obviously the, the assistant dean goes, this is just another one of these mentally ill people, but this is the psych warfare programming they're putting them through. So they're processing it for them, preparing them. And it's like, oh, absolutely. The, the, it's, it's mind control. Oh, you poor thing. Let me take care of that for you. Yeah, there's the video. School officials shred oppressive Close quote, pocket constitutions. Here, see, my memory said throw it away. I'm sorry, it was worse than I said. Here, I'll put it through a shredder. Professor says about America's founding document. She goes, oh, hi. oh, yes, I understand. Let me put that right in the shredder for you. We're going to call the police and find out who's doing this, my sweetie. Go watch the video. I mean, Yale, they're just like, yeah, listen to you. We're not going to have costume parties. They're scary. I'm scared. Now, listen, it's free speech. That's what liberal... No! I mean, worse than Luke Skywalker saying, no, Darth Vader's not my father. I mean, it's even worse acting, too. Just, no, it's not true! It's impossible! I saw it's Trump 2016! Somebody said mother father! Inquisition. <laughs> these people are so nuts, I kind of enjoy it at this point. I'm going to be honest with you, these people are the freakest sweats I've ever seen in my life. And it's got quotes from the TV pieces in here where they're like running around with the police going, Someone said it, we heard it, someone said there were two genders. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> these people are insane. Actually, I actually love this. I want more of it. I've never seen such unintentional. Comedy since Walker, Texas Ranger. Uh, oh, oh. That is intentional, unintentional comedy. That's inside baseball, just so you know. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's really actually, I love it. I, and it's, they fired the professors that said, no, people are allowed to have costume parties. They fired them. I feel so safe now. And they're taking everybody's pensions all over the world. I feel safe now. And they're building huge re-education camps and using the term re-education camp in the official U.S. Army resettlement manual? <sighs> They're using Soviet brainwash terms? Wow! Oh, man, I'm feeling really good right now. <sighs> Believing... I'm, I'm going to try to read this article and get another news. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Believing in two genders is a hate crime. <laughs> That's the, 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 that is close quote. Under police investigation at Catholic College. Guys, just whenever you want, play Spanish Inquisition. Just don't even ask me. Just play it every few minutes. Just like, Let's just have one right now. Can I have one more, please? Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> it even looks like social justice warriors. The very looks on their faces. We're going to get you. What? For a free speech? Never shut up. All right, sorry. In fact, hit pause with the one that's crouching down with that look, that's the crazed look of a like a 75, 80 IQ moron on a power trip. That's that's exactly, again, if you're a radio listener and we have a TV simulcast, Infowars.com forward slash show. Absolutely, that is, they have, what great actors that you have really encapsulated how authoritarians act when they're hopping around on a power trip. I don't care if it's out of control cops, I don't care if it's out of control gang members, any racial group, religious group, uh, look at the looks. That looks just like ISIS with the same crazed looks they have in their eyes. That's what whacked out lowbrows trying to dominate everybody's discourse look like. You want to see it. 
In fact, let's have, hear John Cleese one more time, please. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> By the way, John Cleese has come out and said it's like a new Spanish Inquisition, the attack on free speech. So is Jerry Seinfeld. So is this and everybody else. But see, they're an older generation of real liberals. They think it's just happened on accident. And you know, Atlantic Monthly says, oh, the mental illness of the coddled people at universities, they're mentally ill. You made them that way. This was designed to get to this. I made films 18 years ago saying this was coming because they were already doing it in certain areas of, of Sweden. John Cleese thinks political correctness is killing comedy. It's going to kill more than that, brother. Now, let's continue here. <clears throat> Let me get to the really good comedy, but this is not comedy. This is deadly dangerous, but it is funny. Believing in two genders is a hate crime. <laughs> I'm sorry. But what's funny is, is that there, uh, it's now being investigated at the Catholic College by the police. The school, now, now I'm going to read this as, as if it's serious. I'm going to read this in my uh, Ted Knight voice. Believing in two genders is a hate crime under police investigation at Catholic College. The school was so spooked, it called the Los Angeles Police Department. Now, I'm going to read this in a British broadcaster voice. That's even more serious. Excuse me. Hold on. Wait. Someone heard them say, father or mother, he or she. Police have been called as well. Believing in... Believing... Believing in two genders is a hate crime under police investigation at Catholic College. The school was so spooked, it called the Los Angeles Police Department. It's uncommon at Jesuit universities these days for someone to openly share a traditional Catholic viewpoint. When it happened at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, the school was so frightened, it called the Los Angeles Police Department. Both the police and the university's bias incident response team oh, are investigating, thank God, the stated belief that only two genders exist, male and female, as a hate crime. A Loyola alumni office employee discussed her views on sexual orientation, which aligned with the Roman Catholic Church, with students who were hanging up posters on the subject on April 14th. Can you imagine a professor speaking with students about there being two genders? This is one of the most, I'm sorry to have to say this on air. I know there may be children listening. This is so profane. Cosette Carlo Leo, one of the students involved, told the college fix in a phone interview that the hate crime under investigation is, quote, denying transgenderism. <gasps> Uh, 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 I'm scared. Sorry. Carlillo's account, her account of the, oh, the account, agrees in part with an email by the husband of the employee with whom she tangled. Oh, you know, she had great courage to face down this evil one. The employee told Carlillo, who identifies as gender neutral, Oh, good, good, good demon. Oh, excuse me. That only two genders exist, male and female. According to the student, Carillo told the fix that the statement was the hate crime in fact. Carillo responded that you can have your opinion as long as it doesn't deny my existence. Just like you can't deny man-made climate change or anything and pay their carbon taxes or you'll have to be arrested i'm afraid mm -hmm. <laughs> continuing mm -hmm. outside reports of what happened differ she told the los angeles laolian that she and other students noticed that rainbow week posters had been removed and placed behind a garbage can <gasps> i'm sure it wasn't by them to run a false flag as they were Reposting the signs, the employee allegedly approached the students of the LGBTQ barbecue issues and voiced her opinions on differing sexualities, expressing that anti-LGBTQ signs should be put up in place of the student's sign. Carillo told the Laolian that employees told me that I was wrong and unnatural and Opinion editor at the Laolian also referred to employees' traditional Catholic views as a hate crime. Yes, denounce her. Because it disrespected someone else's existence. What if, I, I totally agree. In fact, 
In fact, I routinely do this, and I forgot to bring it today, but I'm going to demand, will someone get on the microphone in there, and I want everyone in the control room right now to, re to recognize that I officially am a British Springer Spaniel, and not just that, I'm a black Springer Spaniel, and I'm royal, and I belong to the Queen of England, well, she belongs to me. And everyone now must recognize that I am a dog, in fact, that can speak. And I want to be genetically altered, beyond a sex change, to be made a female dog named Hillary Clinton. Now, who wishes to kneel before me and accept that I am, in fact, a black-eared dog? Oh, we praise you. Oh. Good, good. Let's cut to the camera. Out of dog character for a moment. None of this is planned. This is all real. This will probably be all over TV tonight. Probably claim actually you believe it. I, have a, I am a dog. And if you deny that I can change my species, you're hateful. Nico, getting serious here. Do you, get on the microphone. Do you, do you accept I'm a dog and then I'm going to call the police? I'm going to call the Austin Police Department right now. If, if, if you don't recognize that I'm truly a dog and then pay for my sex change to a female dog. Will this affect my paycheck? Well, I'm going to have you arrested, buddy. <laughs> I'm a dog, okay? I accept you as you are. All right. Now, what if I want to marry a pig? That's your choice. You're not making fun of my existence. You're not saying these are really black socks I'm Alex, wearing, are you? Alex, that's hate speech. What are you talking You're about? You're not saying these are black socks I'm wearing, are you? No, of course not. Okay, so so uh, uh, these are not socks. You're falling apart. <laughs> uh, again, if you're a radio listener, folks, I've put black socks on my ears, and uh, I am a trans genetic creature. Uh, uh, actually, I'm a chimera, and everyone has to accept it. Thank you, Nico. Does anybody else want to comment in there in the control room? I accept your trans species status. Good. Do it. Because if not, there's going to be a Spanish Inquisition on your butt. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any comments? I, I've got to get down on my knees real quick. Hold on. But let's get serious. Oh, God. oh, good, good, good. Now, again, this is mainly a radio audience there, Matt, but Matt is worshiping me right now because I have transcended my humanness, and I've now decided I'm a dog. I don't want any basic rights or freedoms or future or, or, or anything else. I just want to be able to be weird and mentally ill, and then I'll be patted on the head, and that's my new bobble. Because the globalists talked hundreds of years ago about giving us bobbles to serve them, little trinkets like medals and things, but now they found just give you faux rights and weirdness and then make it a cause celeb. All right, I'm going to get really serious because there's massive serious news, but I, I kind of went off the deep end here with all these jokes, but this is really serious business. And we've got um, former Navy SEAL coming on to talk about some really hardcore issues of the globalist sleeper cells, bringing in the Muslim radicals by design and what they call uh, the Jihad Tet Offensive uh, that, that I believe is being planned as well. All this and more coming up. Serious information straight ahead. But actually, this is deadly dangerous attacks on free speech. Well, after the drubbing Ted Cruz received in five primaries last night, Gateway Pundit has declared it's official Ted Cruz mathematically eliminated from GOP race. And they included a chart. But he did win one delegate in Rhode Island. But the Never Trump folks are seeing things a little differently. They declared after last night's drubbing, no worry, the path to the nomination does not hinge on any of these outcomes. And that's right, they're still planning on stealing the nomination with voterless elections. But it doesn't look like Ted Cruz, who called a basketball hoop a basketball ring, while in the Hoosier State, or John Kasich, who eats his pizza with a fork, will be dropping out anytime soon. In fact, they've now teamed up to try and take down the Donald. But here's more bad news for them. Trump has passed Romney in the popular vote total and is likely to break the GOP record. More people are jumping parties to the Republican Party to vote for Donald Trump. Ted, just listen to Adrian. You can't win! Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. And check out InfoWarsLife.com for some of our amazing nutraceuticals. All right, we're going to get really hardcore serious in the next hour looking at military threats around the world, massive buildups along the Russian borders, also massive buildups obviously around China, and uh, not just those threats, but also the jihad sleeper cells that are being brought into the West. The FBI even admits they know there are sleeper cells all over the place. And so when they attack, we'll have our liberties taken. Well, no, we're going to expose who's behind this. So the criminals in our government that are allowing this to happen will get in serious trouble for aiding and abetting uh, this jihad. And our governments have been doing 
a lot for decades behind the scenes to take out non-radical regimes or less radical regimes and put in the most horrible groups backed by Saudi Arabia. So that's coming up with the former top Navy SEAL uh, in the next hour. Roger Stone will be joining us. Uh, some of the stories up on Infowars.com, speaking of free speech, I haven't even gotten to the attacks on it today. It's every day. It's like 15, 20 videos and articles. We have uh, university students, student rep on free speech on national TV says some people have more equal rights than others. Literally from Animal Farm saying you can take some people's rights away. Also, Trump on Hillary. People that did far less are sitting in jail cells. We're going to play that clip. And we also have a link to the live stream. Donald Trump speaks on foreign policy uh, in Washington, D.C. And we'll be having uh, some of the excerpts uh, of that uh, as it unfolds. But we probably should be carrying some of that stream. So let's kind of punch that up. Maybe in the next segment, air four or five minutes of that uh, before we get to our guests. So let's go ahead and get that uh, launched up and ready for folks. I was mentioning it earlier, but uh, that is now ongoing. But we'll again have clips of it for you uh, as well. Also, powerful article by Wayne Madsen, why Nancy Reagan hated the Bush family. Um, you have to understand, folks, she knew they shot Reagan. More and more of this is coming out, and it's a big deal. That's why the media always demonized her after Reagan got shot, and they kind of kept him partially drugged up, was that she knew what was going on. They were trying to demonize her in case she had to be taken down. And I'm not saying she was perfect. She had her own problems, but uh, now we understand why the CIA-run media hated her. Oh, and by the way, speaking of that, Corbert, of course, um, has taken over CBS uh, late night television and he has come out last night and this is in the Hollywood Reporter and Vanity Fair and others and said that she would make a great CIA director basically that she should be running the CIA close quote isn't that funny after hundreds of news articles the last two days saying I'm crazy she's not connected to the CIA when the NFL and all of it openly is, and, and all this cop killer stuff and all this revolution stuff is, because they want a failed leftist revolution to bring in tyranny and a backlash, a fascist backlash. And I got top experts from the formerly of the CIA coming on to talk about it later in the week. Mr. Stone and others, not the Stone coming on the next hour. And uh, Mr. Steele and quite a few others. It's just amazing how they operate and how dumb they think we are. It's, 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 it's really amazing. Paul Watson's written an article about that. We'll play that clip as well. Before I go any further, though, if you're ever thinking about getting storable foods, the world has never been more insane. Things have never been deteriorating faster. I wish they weren't. Patriots need to be prepared. And the best place to get high-quality storable foods is InfoWarsStore.com. We have the My Patriot Supply, Full Spectrum, their latest deals. It's changed every week, up to date. But I private label their exact same food, just as fresh, 25 years, super high quality, special diets, whatever you need, hundreds of different packages, InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsSelect.com takes you right to InfoWarsSelect where you get 30 to 40% off. You normally get 5 to 10% off their already lowest price. I did that to be able to have the lowest price on their great line. But I'm allowed every once in a while, contractually, use it a few times a year, to offer it at 30 to 40 percent off that's running right now and i think we're going to end it on monday because it's it's really uh, sales are very substantive profit isn't too big per sale but we're having a lot of sales so that's good to fund the overall operation find out more at infowarsstore.com and you get free shipping on the other items at infowars life when you get 50 dollars or more on your order and there's auto ship 10 percent off check into all of it infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site stay with us we'll we'll have some of the trump stuff coming up from deep in the heart of Texas, broadcasting worldwide, we've got a very special guest uh, joining us to break down the sleeper cell agenda of the globalists to bring in radical jihadis by the millions. That's coming up. But right now, let's go to Trump live in D.C. We're coming to you from Austin, Texas, but let's take you now live to D.C. with his foreign policy speech. Defeat terrorists and promote regional stability, not radical change. We need to be clear-sighted about the groups that will never be anything other than enemies. And believe me, we have groups that no matter what you do, they will be the enemy. We have to be smart enough to recognize who those groups are, who those people are, and not help them. And we must only be generous to those that prove they are indeed our friends. 
Teleprompter free, folks. You're actually saying it. We desire to live peacefully and in friendship with Russia and China. We have serious differences with these two nations and must regard them with open eyes. But we are not bound to be adversaries. We should seek common ground based on shared interests. Russia, for instance, has also seen the horror of Islamic terrorism. I believe an easing of tensions and improved relations with Russia from a position of strength only is possible, absolutely possible. Common sense says this cycle, this horrible cycle of hostility must end and ideally will end soon. Good for both countries. Some say the Russians won't be reasonable. I intend to find out if we can't make a deal under my administration, a deal that's great, not good, great for America, but also good for Russia, then we will quickly walk from the table. It's as simple as that. We're going to find out. Fixing our relations with China is another important step in really toward creating a even more prosperous period of time. China respects strength. And by letting them take advantage of us economically, which they are doing like never before, we have lost all of their respect. We have a massive I'll say this. deficit. He's acting like there's a little bit of teleprompter, but I heard he wasn't going to use one, but then it doesn't sound like it was written. It sounds like his regular talking point, so we're going to find out. It doesn't matter. I mean, I don't care about a foreign policy speech. Somebody has their own teleprompter if they wrote their speech. But China. let's keep going with this. Right now, look at what China is doing in the South China Sea. They're not supposed to be doing it. No respect for this country or this president. We can both benefit or we can both go our separate ways. If need be, that's what's going to have to happen. After I'm elected president, I will also call for a summit with our NATO allies and a separate summit with our Asian allies. In these summits, we will not only discuss a rebalancing of financial commitments, but take a fresh look at how we can adopt new strategies for tackling our common challenges. For instance, we will discuss how we can upgrade NATO's outdated mission and structure grown out of the Cold War to confront our shared challenges, including migration and Islamic terrorism. Yeah, instead, NATO is opening the door to conquer Europe with the Islamic Horde. That's the problem. I will not hesitate to deploy military force when there is no alternative. But if America fights, it must only fight to win. That's Ron Paul's quote. That's right. Quick, known missions. I will never send our finest into battle unless necessary. And I mean absolutely necessary. And we'll only do so if we have a plan for... Well, notice Trump has the same, the has the same hand signs as I do. I don't do those on purpose. I just do it. Have you ever notice that? It's weird. I get accused of, like, secret Our signals. War is peace and prosperity, not war and destruction. The best way to achieve those goals is through a disciplined... Isn't it good to see a presidential candidate using their hands? Donald Trump just uh, finished his first big official foreign policy speech. We carried quite a bit of it. We'll have some of the transcript for you in the next hour and go over it. Uh, when his former campaign head and uh, still one of his top advisors, Roger Stone, joins us, as he does uh, at least once a week, coming up in the second, uh, third hour today. We're now in the second hour right now. There is so much unfolding, so much going on. But what you have to understand is our government agencies now are pretty much entirely run by multinational corporations. That's not denied. And so you have to understand, the Central Intelligence Agency got c Congress three years ago. You can just type this into Google. You'll get the Washington Post reporting on it to change the law so the CIA could operate domestically in propaganda, including deception of the American people. And then I come out and say, look at the NFL of all these anti-cop halftime shows with Beyonce and her uh, running around with a baseball bat and she's mad at her husband, breaking car windshields and burning things down with young women watching approvingly. 
This is cultural destabilization, 101. So they had hundreds of publications come out and say, I was crazy, the CIA is not involved in domestic media. And then they had Stephen Colbert last night on late night that he's taken over from David Letterman come out and say, quote, this is all just in your face making fun of you folks, that he thinks Beyonce should be running the CIA just randomly, just threw that in there. We're going to play that clip later. This is how stupid they think you are. Now, we're about to go to our guest. Just wanted to preface it with that, that, that we see them telling us, oh, we have a delegate process. Votes have never counted. That's ridiculous. They're trying to sell you on the idea that delegates aren't supposed to represent the votes from their precinct. And they've manufactured these super delegates out of thin air. They're trying to break our will, but it's not working. AP poll, Gallup polls, and others show between 6 and 8% approval for mainstream media, and it's only dropping. 6% last week in the AP poll. It was 8% a few months before that in Gallup. These people are less popular than scurvy on a ship or something. I mean, it, it, it is just amazing. These people are less popular than syphilis. But they sit up there and they just keep shoving lies, like Obama. I never said we wouldn't have boots on the ground in Syria. He said it 16 times. We played the clips. It's a new level of lies, and it's reached the Marie Antoinette level where they just say, let them eat cake. Why would they bring in the last three years five million people into Europe, a million just in the last six months or so, claiming it was a few hundred thousand here and there, and then suddenly, oh, it's been two, three, four, five million, hundreds of thousands here, cover it up and say it's a few thousand. Every high school in town, including my alma mater, has over 200 refugees from, quote, Syria, and they're really Saudi Arabian and others. This is a Sunni invasion, a, 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 a Wahhabist invasion. On record into Syria, then into Turkey, who opens up a conduit all the way through Europe with Merkel and Halan and all the rest of them and the Swedish prime minister saying, come to me, come to me, and kicking old people out of their government housing and moving them. This is all confirmed. We've had our reporters over there in no-go zones in Paris and in Brussels, Belgium, where they would go 10 miles in any direction and, and Muslims would just run out going, get out of here, screaming at them in, in French or English or, or Arabic. And Biggs has been in a lot of combat. He heard him in Arabic saying, get out of here, infidel, infidel. He's got infidel in his arm, tattooed, freaking out on them. And then they go on TV and say, there's no no-go zones in the U.S. or in England. or in this, this is what's going on. Why would the establishment open a conduit up for the last three years, bring them in, let them come in? Judicial Watch got more documents. We went down there and found the mosque on the Texas border. That they've got sleeper cells coming over. We know this is going on. So the question is, why would our governments be doing this at a level where upwards of 80% they admit with the passports are military age men. A lot of them brag on their Facebook and Twitters, hey, German ladies, I'm here. Here I was in combat in the, in the Free Syrian Army you know, a year ago. Why would you do that? It is a giant sleeper cell invasion. And I had the founder of Oath Keeper, Stuart Rhodes, on a few weeks ago. And he said, you need to get Matt Bracken on. He really knows what he's talking about. You should go read his articles. And I did read them, and just they're amazing. In fact, I want to start reposting them on Infowars.com and, 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 of course, linking to his side if he'd be gracious enough for us to do that uh, because it's very, very important. Tet Take Two, Islam's 2016 European Offensive, and he's the uh, author of Enemies Foreign and Domestic and a well-known advocate for Second Amendment rights. Uh, the following um, guest essay by Bracken is also being published at Western Rifle Shooters Association. And he's also written another article dealing with uh, burning down the house in 2016. He sees war in the near future before a new president takes office. We're going to look at that coming up as well. But uh, enemiesforeignanddomestic.com, enemiesforeignanddomestic.com, and I'm not going to go over his whole bio. You can go there and see it, but a long career in the Navy SEALs uh, going back into the 1980s, Beirut, you name it, just all over the world, uh, Panama Canal, it goes on and on, what he's seen. So he's actually been there, done that. Um, witnessed how people infiltrate, both from the side of an infiltrator, someone trying to find the infiltrators, and he has really written some detailed breakdowns of what's happening. He's a self-described uh, freedom supporter, a constitutionalist who believes in uh, original intent of the Founding Fathers, 
of our country. He lives with his family in North Florida. So, Matt, thanks for coming on. Um, reading your essay, just studying history and, and what's happening, I can find no fault. And, of course, you bring your military background to it as well. Uh, a lot of folks respect your writing. Uh, you, you've heard what I've said in the last five minutes. Was that overall accurate? And what can you add uh, in an overall overview for folks in the next five minutes before we go to break? Okay, it's it's um perfect. Your byline of your website and your show, there is a war for our minds, a battle going on for our minds. It doesn't matter if we're like monks in an Irish monastery discussing what's actually happening if the war for the minds is being lost at the at the at the mass level. We make fun of the North Koreans, you know, we we show them doing the wave in stadiums or you know, swooning for dear leader. But look at Swedes, they've been brainwashed into actually hating themselves. But when they look at the mirror, they say, this blondness just has to go. We're so guilty of everything. Swedes, in America, I mean, the madness over transgender. I just saw a YouTube video um, on a college campus. The guy says, what if I want to be, if I, if I feel that I'm a six foot five Chinese woman and everybody agrees, if that's what you feel, then we should respect you as a six foot five Chinese woman. So the, you can see how much work we have to do. I mean, the fact that after a century of communism, 100 million to 200 million killed under the social, various socialist banners, you have the young generation supporting this retread Bernie Sanders who honeymooned in Nicaragua and Soviet Union, um, Nicaragua during a revolutionary phase. I think this is an extremely dangerous time. I think that, it's, that 2016 is like a 1916 or 1787 or, or 1788. Another key cusp, turning, another key point events. in the pendulum. So, so a crossroads. A big crossroads. We're going to have the, the big Marxist breakout, especially, for example, if tr let's say Trump wins. There's no kinetic event like an assassination. All of these can happen. Massive riots like Watts, Ferguson, Baltimore constantly. Imagine Cleveland on fire during the convention with armored personnel carriers all the way around the beltway. We see Beyonce and, and MTV priming the pump. And that's that's got to yes. be a directive from on top. Absolutely. That That's the, the narrative. So this is the war for the mines. And, and the, in Germany, they actually have a new word. Uh, I think it's Lügenpresse, but it means liar press. So they refer to that, the mainstream media. And I would include almost everything that you can turn on your cable channel is more or less controlled media. They don't get out of certain boundaries. If, you know, if, if anything says uh, anywhere peripherally that this could be a conspiracy theory, they absolutely won't touch it. Oh, there's total Which scripting. There's total scripting. conspiracies to come off. <laughs> exactly, total scripting. So please continue, Matt. Well, I think that the, the biggest danger, we're going to have riots in this country, but in Europe, we're going to have an outbreak of Bezlan, uh, uh, the Paris attacks, Brussels attacks, Something very significant happened during the, the Brussels attacks. And you have to understand that a government, a mass, a, a big organization has to have a communication structure. It's not like a one brain. It has, you know, many individuals. So you have to put a lot of credence in such things as the uh, security levels. They went from sec their maximum security level four back down to three within like 24 hours or 48 hours while terrorists were still on the loose because they were absolutely wiped out. Everybody worked the maximum of overtime. They're exhausted. They can't do it. They have to go home and sleep. Europe has no bench. I think the German army is like 50,000 troops and they are unionized and they won't work over 40 hours. And during NATO exercises, they just quit halfway because the union rep says, that's it. And we don't cross rivers after dark or whatever. So they have no bench. We're going to have an outbreak in Europe, it'll probably start with maybe a do, uh, eight, ten, a dozen attacks widespread. The terrorists have learned the the uh, utility of the synergistic effects of having attacks in various time uh, places at the same time. It, we used to think of it as an Al Qaeda signature, like the East Arab East um, Africa embassies um, being exploded on the same day. But it's more than that. It's a way to overwhelm the, the security system. And in Europe, that's going to be a big problem. Uh, at the same time that we're going to see these Bezlan type attacks, we're going to see infrastructure attacks. Uh, and they'll probably do it on a holiday like they did the Tet Offensive, knowing most of the security services are taking a well-earned break. Yeah, and, and it's 
it's not going to be like the Tet, the Tet in Vietnam, folks that remember that, where that was an actual uh, instruction orders had been assigned. We, that CIA completely missed it, or they might as well have missed it. If any messages were coming in from the field, they were disregarded. But they infiltrated 80,000 uh, VC fighters into cities. And then all on the same day, they went and grabbed AK-47s and satchel charges from caches and ran amok. It won't be like that in Europe. I'm not saying there are 80,000 guys with an order and you know to go on uh, Bastille Day. It's not going to be like that. But when there are, say, 10 attacks, like a, on a Bezna, Bezlan or uh, Paris or Brussels level, that continues so that tomorrow there's another one and then there's somebody just you know running amok with a knife. Rolling this, cascade attacks, uh, cells with no communication, no, almost impossible it, to it identify. Will self -reinforce. It will self-reinforce because the mindset is different. They will self-reinforce. Remember, in that religion, that ideology, a pimp, a drug pusher, he's not sinning. If he's selling this stuff to infidels, good for you, buddy. You know, you, you're really a sharp one. It's a perfect example um, to be evil. That's why they're so into gangsterism, right. raping women, sex with other but men. The, they call themselves, but, you know, these followers of Abraham. It's sick. But, the, but at the very last moment, you can spend your whole life a drug pusher and a pimp and running a discotheque for infidels. And you can undo that all, pull like a parachute. And straight to your 72 virgins. So Get out of jail free card. Smoke dope, party with infidels. You can't do enough good deeds, just like tithing extra or praying extra. There, it's impossible for that person, that sinner, to do enough good deeds if he lived to be 100 to go to heaven. But he can be the worst person in the world, pusher, pimp, armed robber. He goes straight to the 72 virgins if he kills some infidels. So it, it, that's why it will self-reinforce. When you see that the security services are completely overwhelmed, they're exhausted, there are no more, that then another school is, ta is ca taken down, how do you react to it? Especially if the guys are on a suicide mission where they want to just kill all the kids like in well, Bezla. clearly, not sir, I want to get into the details because you ran embassy security. I mean, you're one of the top experts on this, obviously. Matt Bracken, EnemiesFarnedDomestic.com is our guest. It's so important. I skipped this break. But but specifically getting into big picture, talking about our elites, the leftist. I mean, I know they're reckless. I know they hate bitter clingers. I know they want to conquer the West. They see Christian uh, Judaic backgrounds uh, as, as not working in their new system. They want a cultureless plastic system. So they well, bring in the most radical uh, jihadis, uh, tens of thousands of them undoubtedly. So, so here's the question. They start attacking. What are our governments thinking? Why are they doing this? Uh, what is the, I mean, I understand the mission of the jihadis. It's Cloward Piven. You were, you've been, you speak about it all the time, more, better than anybody. It's Cloward Piven. This is a, this is the Jacobins in 1788 plotting how to disrupt the grain market in France so that they can engineer food riots to overthrow the aristocracy. Okay, so I mean, with your Navy SEAL you know, uh, high-level background, you're not just a door kicker, but a guy involved in everything, uh, you know, conferring with my historical analysis and Lord Moxon's, everybody else, it's not our opinion, it's not that we agree, this is what's going on. How do we fight 21st century Jacobins allied with Islam, which strangely enough, towards what? the end, they allied with Islam uh, again 200 years ago. So these people never change. Sure. So how do we no. deal with them? Information war. Um, <laughs> There is a war on for our minds, and the high ground is how do we leverage social media, access to mainstream media, books like the ones that I've written. My books were all about false narrative and getting people to see beyond. My first novel starts with a false flag attack into a stadium where a sniper precipitates a panic stampede, and it's sold in the media and by the government as a right-wing militia kook and a reason why we have to outlaw all semi-automatic weapons. It's my books and my writing. It's about getting people to look beyond the curtain. Well, I want to read your books. I want to get you on on a routine basis. I know Stuart Rose, all other folks that are in the know really awesome. respect you. And, and, uh, so, so, so let's go back briefly then, because I interrupted you. Let's talk about the Jacobins lead forward. You were talking about how they would engineer food riots, how they'd bring in societal crisis to get control. They're the proto-communists in the history books. That's what we're dealing with. So, so break that down. And then what the end game is, bringing in millions of jihadis. Well, yeah, that... The Jacobins said their motto was um, out of chaos order. But first they have to create the chaos. So they're not saying that it was just chaos in feudal Europe. 
They're saying we create chaos and from the, you have to, in other words, demolish a building, then build it back up with the bricks the way that you want them organized. You can't just go into a building and change a little few pipes and windows. You demolish it when it's atomized, the granular level, like Cambodia, uh, you know, uh, Poland in, the, in World War II. At that level, you can do anything. You can macro engineer. The trains can be running. The buses can be running. But you have to get the, pre, the we're in a pre-revolutionary state now. But they're going to pull out all the stops, especially if it looks like Trump is going to win. Certainly before he's inaugurated, we'll see a complete uh, go for broke scenario, both in Europe, which will be this major Muslim offensive. The end result of that will be a grand compromise, which is like half Sharia today. And as we know, that means three quarters Sharia in a generation. And you're in Yemen in two generations. In our country, we're, we're going to see a complete fragmenting of the um, society along racial lines primarily. It's going to be brutal. I call it Rwanda times Yugoslavia uh, uh, times, you know, uh, it's this is the insane. takedown of America. I totally this concur. Take, and, 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 and I agree. The communists are activating. They're suddenly all over Austin with red yes. flags. They're smiling. They say the time of blood is here. They're activating their sleeper cells. And I would expect to see communists start carrying out terror attacks. And as you said, false flagging the patriots. Flag. What do police departments do? What does the military do? Because they're going to be caught in the middle of this. Especially when terrorists, particularly in Europe, will see it first because the, this... Islamic Tet is going to happen in Europe. It's going to be a huge wake up for us. It may lead to a landslide victory for Trump. Imagine something worse than 9-11 uh, in October. How does Hillary explain that? You know, people come in from Benghazi and blow up Rome. Uh, you know, it's going to make Trump a sure victor if that happens. And then the, the left will say, this is our chance. We have to go for it. And there'll be street riots like between the uh, the communists and the national socialists in Berlin, I expect to see shooting at some of these big demonstrations or explosions going off. Um, and in that way, the powers that be can say, uh, we, we need to um, put in a little bit of emergency conditions. Therefore, the uh, protests will have to be in separate safe zones, 10 miles outside the Beltway at a designated FEMA camp or whatever they want to say. But we'll, we're going to see the um, freedom of assembly taken away. The, the, the key word, and that's almost like a code word, when you start hearing emergency, because they'll never say martial law. Those words will never come out of Obama, Jarrett, Michelle, that, that crowd. It'll be emergency. They'll say, during the present emergency, we can't afford uh, to have these mass demonstrations, which always lead to violence and, unfortunately, bombs going off and people shooting. So we have to put that in abeyance. Now, if there's a real takedown, the grid goes down. Uh, before November, then there'll be no election. If there's no electricity, there's no election. Then we're automatically into an emergency situation. Um, another way that the communists can engineer this is to start a rumor, doesn't have to have any boots on the ground, just start a rumor, an internet rumor, that you know white racist crackers are planning to snipe at black folks lined up at the polling stations. Just a rumor, it's all it takes. You can even you know put up a fake YouTube if you want. You know, find something from 10 years ago somewhere else, recaption it as this happened yesterday, and it'll sound like, you know, rednecks are dragging blacks behind chains in Mississippi and shooting and threatening to shoot at blacks in polling stations. If that suppresses the black turnout, or even if it doesn't, they'll just say that it did, then they'll say that the election would have swung on that vote, which was suppressed by white violence. This is a narrative that will be completely sold by the mainstream media. Well, the just like the, the, the burning black churches thing turned out to be totally right. fake, just like the uh, lacrosse team was fake. That was they'll all beta the testing, time. and they're just they'll launching this time. everywhere. And we'll, we'll be on our own in our own parallel free media as long as we have it. Now, I, I wrote a short story called What I Saw at the Coup. I should, be, I should have finished a novel a couple of years ago, but I, it's too important that I write these things, the short stuff that's on my link on my website. No, I agree. we like, got to get everything out now. A Last Brave New Babylon, What I Saw at the Coup. The, the internet we can't take for granted. This is like right now our freedom fighter pipeline. YouTube, uh, Infowars. Got to use it now, folks. Cause use when, it uh, now. Yeah. If they, they're going to take it away. I heard from, from folks that, that were at a, at a law enforcement con, uh, on, uh, conclave that there's a lot of buzz about Facebook and how they're going to tune people down. Um, 
This, they're also doing their information. Oh, yeah. First, they're going to start restricting. It's already begun. Stay there, Matt Bracken. This guy's 100% dead on from my research. So he can give us the other angle on it. He's going to come back and break down the different angles of how this can unfold and how we stop it, hopefully. We're on the march. The Empire is better on start the praying. Run. I'll tell you right now. If everybody is praying, you're idiots. GCN I can feel it in my gut. I can see it. We are. It's coming. It's here. Matt Bracken's our guest, enemiesforeignanddomestic.com. I want to read his books. In fact, I want to carry them. I haven't read them yet, but I'm told they're excellent. Uh, you know, nonfiction, and I guess some of them are fiction, but he can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but what he's saying, I mean, the way he's breaking it down, and notice how much energy he's got, how concerned he is. I bet money when this guy isn't on air, he's not like that. But you start talking about this, there's no way you can't get animated and start just really connecting it to everything because it's scientific. It's a rollout. It's been done in other countries. It's been de beta tested in Europe. Europe's about a year maybe two ahead of us. And I'm telling you, I'm going to see if he agrees with me. The way to try to back them off is if they think that it's absolutely going to fall flat on its face and that we know who's in charge of it, people like Soros, the globalist, their operatives inside the different agencies and the big banks, instead of their puppets, and we let them know we know the plan and the police and military do, which I know that's happening, and I've been a big critic of the police and, and the military carrying out bad operations, but they're some of the most awake people out there. So that's two separate issues that then they may back off. The problem is that might actually scare them into doing it anyway. So we're kind of reaching a moment in history where things are collapsing. They've engineered it this way. But once you turn this thing loose, it's a juggernaut. I don't think they can put it back in the bottle. So I'm just telling you right now. Yes, this is how we fund the operation. We fund the operation selling things that we believe in and we use. And we're running the biggest special that we can run possibly on InfoWars Select, high quality, storable foods. It's my Patriot food, the same stuff, packaged the same time. I can contractually offer bigger discounts on already great deals with uh, it being private labeled InfoWars Select. We're running a special for just a few more days, 30 to 40% off all InfoWars Select storable food. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsSelect.com takes you right to the sub page, and you can buy my Patriot, the exact same food, uh, if you want for. A lot more. It's still very, very good, but it's the exact same food. And that's why we normally sell both brands because it's the same stuff. And it's just the way contracts and stuff like this works. They have a bunch of other distributors. So I have to follow all these contracts and rules. And I've just found a way to bring you the lowest price out there. So that's what we've done. Infowarsstore.com. Also, Anthroplex is just a whole bunch of known high quality herbs that naturally uh, boost your stamina, your energy, your libido. It's, I don't want to say it's the poor man's super male vitality, but that's basically what it is. It's just a powder form uh, instead of a liquid cold press form. Uh, quite frankly, in some cases, it's probably stronger than super male or super female. Uh, but it has different effects for different people. Talk with your physician before. It's all recognized as safe, but this stuff's real. So, I mean, you probably notice within a day or two when you get up in the morning. I'm just going to leave it at that. Infowarslife.com. Anthroplex is back. After two months of being sold out, super male is about to sell out. There's plenty of super female. I don't know why. It works just as good as the male on males or females. Also, DNA Force is back in stock. X2 is there. You can get 10% off when you sign up for auto ship. And orders of $50 or more, uh, ladies and gentlemen, are um, free shipping. So I want to thank you all for your support. Uh, quite frankly, uh, now more than ever, it is time to... Get as aggressive as you can in the media, however you can, warning people about what's happening while personally getting yourself ready. And let's just hope all these collapses and organized revolutions that have been carried out by the globalists in the last few years aren't going to come here. But you look at what they've done everywhere else, they're trying it here. The overthrow in Ukraine, the Arab Spring, all this stuff is run by the very same nasty people I mean, the latest James Bond movie, they admitted, was advised by MI6. And the Quantum Group is the name of George Soros's fund. And the bad guy who runs Spectre is the head of the Quantum Group. He's the guy that tried to crash the British pound. Even intelligence agencies are telling you who runs Spectre. So understand, Ian Fleming was MI6. This is art imitating life, not the other way around. And I had to say one person... He's like a top general of this globalist crime syndicate. It's a Soros. But there's others even worse than him. And these are people that have bad will towards the West. I'm going to shut up now for Matt Bracken because I've been jumping in a lot. He's just laying out so much knowledge. Start wherever you want. Go wherever you want. Former Navy SEAL uh, involved in a lot of clandestine operations uh, all over the world.
Uh, you can find out more at enemiesforeignanddomestic.com. Cubs highly recommended, and I can tell why now, because I was unaware of this guy. There's so many great Patriots out there. I know the Patriots know who he is. I just get so busy covering news. And then, Matt, lay out this Tet Offensive, how you think we stop it. You've got the floor, my friend. Uh, I don't think we stop it. I think that the forces are in motion are like deep sea tsunamis. The earthquakes already happened, and the waves are moving across the ocean. Um, there's going to be a convergence what people tend to do is look at each potential calamity in isolation and say, well, that's survivable. You know, the, if just a hurricane just hit New Orleans, that's survivable. But if you get, you know, 100 Katrinas that happen at the same time, the system is shocked. It goes into shock. Can't move. It can't save itself. Like somebody being shot once in the foot compared to being shot 20 times at once. Um, we're, we're going to have an overload to the system. Now, the plan might be for this Marxist takedown. There might I look at it like a pyramid, and you have at the very top some very few very evil people. And I think that there you could almost, depending on your religious persuasions, you could call them almost like a satanic influence or force. Below that, you have people that are also evil, but they really believe in communist revolution and that we're going to attain it. But we're, obviously, we're not going to attain a communist revolution. We're armed to the teeth in this country. But we will have a massive civil war. But the Civil War won't be a geographic North-South Civil War. It's going to be a society tearing into itself Civil War, kind of in the way of, of uh, Bosnia, you know, where people all speak the same language, um, but they have different factions. In this country, there will be such a strong racial element that it's going to get out of control in a very ugly way. And at the, the problem is that there's no way to recoup the civilization. It's a very precious bubble floating that we're floating in, and we take it for granted. But our modern civilization is much more dangerous to ourselves than previous civilizations because, for example, um, calamities that happened to Europe, Black Death, uh, 30 years war, Cromwell in Ireland, uh, events that killed a third of a population, say, in a generation. You could still just grow food on your own acre and survive if you weren't our food, we don't grow it anymore. Our food comes from thousands of miles away. We all now are living in the equivalent of a glass bubble on Mars. And we don't see the glass bubble. We just think how pretty outer space is. But electricity has become our oxygen. And we're living under this false glass, artificial glass bubble. It's such a complex system now. It has to run perfectly like a, you know, like a Swiss I think I've, I got to interrupt. I think run. I found my new guru. Man, you Boy. see it exactly like I do because that's how it is. If we have a collapse event, it will take hundreds of years to try to even get back, but the reactors will start melting down within right. a matter of months. I if mean, we oh, have my God. Sorry, go ahead. Just it might be the South. You, it might be like Argentina. You'll have to get to... You know, the north could be a, a, a nuclear wasteland, depending on, I don't really technically, I can't profess uh, any great knowledge about nuclear plant safety, but if the economy uh, locks up, if the grid goes down, something people need to understand. There are three parallel systems, like our nervous system, uh, muscular system, you know, bone structure. We have a financial system, an electrical grid, and a computer network system. If any one of those three is attacked really in depth, you know, recurring attacks, then all three collapse and our society collapses. You cannot, you know, if the financial system collapses, people can't get money out of the ATM, they loot the stores, game over. If the computer system collapses, the grid runs out of control, you know, uh, pipelines go open haywire all over the, collapse, all, game over. So any of those three collapse, Financial, uh, computer, global computer network, it's mostly Cisco hardware running over fiber optical cables, and the electrical grid, which we know that they, that Metcalf station attack out in California a year ago, looking at it from as a spec ops officer, that was a proof of concept test. That was a very professional thing. They had gone through in underground, cut optical trunks, did things to, so that the, there would be no uh, rapid response. Um, fired at these giant transformers, shut the thing down. That to me was a, a somebody showing somebody else that if we do this 20 times, we take down America. Proof of grid. concept. Proof of concept. And, and increase my budget because if I have 20 teams, if you budget me for 20 teams, the people I would be looking at would be foreign students. 
Uh, that's the way that you can cycle um, commandos in, into a country. They can come in, for, for example, for one year of being a student, and they can recon their whole area. They can come in another year as a student in another college, and at the last minute, be organized into a cell, take out these uh, these stations. For example, I just say, look, if, if Iran, just to pick on Iran here, if they're going to spend billions of dollars on a nuclear program, why wouldn't they spend a few million on a cheap kill grid takedown scenario just using commandos disguised as students? It's what we would do if we were smart and had that mindset. KGB used to plan that kind of thing. But how can we assume that, we, that our grid is not going to be collapsed at some point? especially with these Marxists trying to do the big takedown between the conventions and the inauguration this is a time of maximum danger. I, I think of it as uh, 1917 in Russia or 1789 in France. And again, they want it to collapse, so they take over. But they can't take over. This is the thing. A plan, this is what I say a lot, a plan to ride a tiger is not the same as riding a tiger. Sure, that's why when Mao took over in China, you know, 40, 50 million people died in the first round. But, and, and communism still didn't work, but it can wreck a society. And what I'm afraid is we're going to have in this country a wrecked society. Now, we have to hold on to the Bill of Rights no matter what, no matter who's put on the Supreme Court. They can say the moon is made out of green cheese and that, you know, anybody that says they're a giraffe, you have to call them a giraffe. It won't make it reality. They can't take away our First or Second Amendment rights. If they try to, I don't care. If they stack the deck with communists on the Supreme we Court. We have to defend every liberty at point blank range and promote because, it everywhere. Because we may not have this pipe, we may not have this means of communication. We could have our internet taken away. I, I wrote the short story. You can just look at these things on the internet called What I Saw at the Coup, where as the, the backdrop is a missile war in the Middle East that takes down our grid temporarily and our internet for longer. And during that period, troublemakers like us are quietly taken off the stage left because there's no way for anybody to know what's happening to anybody for that month. And then when the internet comes back on, it comes back on in a much more controlled way. And, and how this is gonna go is they've already got the Commissars and the UN Strong Cities Initiative in every major city, quote, advising the police. And so if the police go along with it, then the Justice Department doesn't come in and harass them and take over. And so they're already setting up these contacts during a collapse to have the commissars order the police and, and local security services led by federal leaders to go out and round up the patriots. The police and others just have to not follow those orders at the that's point. Right. That, plus, you really want that job trying to go and round up the all plan. the veterans? That's the plan to ride the tiger. It's not the same as riding the tiger. In my first novel... The guys that actually shoot into the stadium on opening day of you know that Washington FedEx football field, from a mile away, somebody rainbow arcs in some uh, uh, SKS rounds, causing a panic stampede. Now these are just two ATF, you know, mid-level executives that want to see the ATF's budget increase because it'll increase their power and prestige. They know that they're not going to wind up with America being disarmed. They know it'll lead to a civil war. They know people won't turn in their semi-automatic weapons. But they're happy to start a civil war if they're in charge of, like, one of the factions that's going to be very powerful. Crisis right. is our brand. Right. And, and we're going to see events spin completely out of control, particularly if, as I said, the financial system, you know, you look at, at um, Deutsche Bank and situations in Europe that are more dire even than with our Fed and, and our quantitative easing. Europe is in just as much of thin ice financially. Imagine when they, this tet breaks out, nobody will be going to work for months. So what happens to the economy? The metros are closed. Every time a metro runs again, somebody jumps out and blows one up. Sure. No more well, metros. That's sure. how they get to work. And there's also going to be a move to round up all the Muslims in Europe and here because they're sleeper cells. You'll almost have to. But under the cover of that, then they'll have the precedent to round up everybody they want. And you can see uh, that as the kind of right-wing response being sold by former CIA directors and others. That's another yes. program they've got cooking. So both the right-wing and left-wing elements of the power structure want the crisis because they all think they're going to battle each other inside the control grid for who gets control of the crisis yes. when they're unleashing something, as you've said properly, that is uncontrollable and will bring in meltdown worldwide that's probably not survivable. We have to somehow communicate with these different establishment groups and say, listen, 
your guy upstairs is probably Satan himself. Stop following these orders, I you lunatics. I don't think that it can be turned off. I don't think that if George Soros had a con you know conversion on the road to Damascus, if George Soros turned into you know George Washington tomorrow and he said, "Stop, everybody, turn around," it, there's too much momentum. It's now like giant boulders coming down the hill. It's. I agree no with you, unfortunately. I agree with you. These forces. I agree with you, but. Uh... We need to prepare for a grid down scenario in the next year because we're not going to have a Russian revolution, a uh, French revolution through Washington, D.C., and the power stays on. I promise you that in this chaos, even if engineers can't get to work because it's too dangerous because there's just people Venezuela now doesn't have power basically no refrigeration all these other countries can't do it under communism and command and control you don't get electricity or medicine folks but it's going to probably collapse before they get anywhere near establishing com a communist control I understand, yes. because we'll have a civil war like the Finns. people forget there was a war called the winter war where little finland actually beat the soviet union that Rolled in thinking. There's a book well, on that, isn't it? Total resistance. Yeah, and they, but they tangled with like a Switzerland. They walked right into a. They sent a bunch of res, unmotivated reservists, conscripts, into a country like Switzerland with a William Tell type of, you know, Marxist. Uh, excuse me, Patriot. Marxman mentality. You know, Marxmanship culture. Isn't William it, Tell the archetype of the uh, of, of the rebel against tyranny? The true story of the guy that took yes. out all those people because they hurt his kids. That's right, and that's right. He was he was a uh, 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 you know Charles Bronson, so to speak. Well, there's millions of Charles Bronsons in this country, and I have to tell you, some of the most dangerous Charles Bronsons I know are older than me, and they might have a bad cough or they can't ride their motorcycle anymore. But they they they're thinking, you know, when this happens, I'm I'm not just going to go quietly. I'm going to make it, you know. I, I don't I think all the concept. leftists that can barely wipe their noses realize that they're about to stick their hand on a badger hole. No, that's right. And and forget about uh, AR-15s. The most common type of rifle is the, just the generic bolt-action deer rifle that can hit and kill a 200-pound mammal at 400 yards. Remington 700. Millions. I shot millions deer at 1,000 yards with a Remington 700. And the, and the most dangerous order of battle will be what I call the militia of one where just one guy doesn't tell anybody, not even his wife maybe. He just goes out, he goes to town with the rifle, he takes one shot, and that's it. I mean, look at the DC sniper situation. They got it totally wrong, they got the acoustics wrong. Stay there, stay there, Matt Bracken, stay there. We're gonna talk about this, this is so important. We got five minutes here and five minutes the next segment, then Roger Stone, the consummate Trump insider, is gonna give us all the intel on what's coming up, what's developed of the big victories last night. The globalists are financing revolution all over the world. They're against the nation state. They play the countries off against each other. You know, that's like a James Bond movie. Well, that's because that's how it really works. And the worst element is the Anglo-American establishment. That's what they call themselves. It's nothing to do with being Anglo, but it's people that run England and the United States and a few other countries. It's the dominant force because it had the wealthiest, most open free market system to milk. And it is just running around all over the world, allied with radical Islam. And we have to get that narrative out of it. it's game over. I want to invite uh, Matt Bracken, who I got to say I'm extremely impressed with. Uh, I read some of his essays, thought they were excellent. Uh, but I tell you, uh, I absolutely click with what he's saying. It doesn't mean I agree with him. I totally agree with him. But it's not like I like him because I agree. It's because I know it's accurate. And everything he's saying, the way it pieces together, is exactly basically the way I've been seeing it. A lot of my other sources have been seeing it. And what's scary is... It's like there's no doubt now. I mean, you can see this is the big one. Now, I hope and pray there's some way to avert this, push it back, whatever. But my gut is 50 times more concerned than it's ever been. I mean, I almost feel bad even being here on air, not getting, you know, dug in out in the countryside. Uh, but I realize I need to be on air as much as I can. I got a bunch of quick, short questions for you, Matt. And you got to come back for like an hour and a half if you can next week or hell, even maybe tomorrow, part two or something, because I want to really flesh this out historically get into your you know, military background and stuff as a guy that led, you know, SEALs, not just, you know, out there uh, heroically doing a lot of this work, but you, clearly from your training, a lot of classified stuff, uh, I can see you've really been behind the curtain. Looking at this, though, just quick questions. The police aren't perfect. They've been militarized by the globalists, but they're more awake than the general public, I found. 
Clearly, there's a move to cause a civil war aimed at local government, kill the cops. Kind of the army of one thing, but, you know, get every little thug to go shoot a cop in the back of the head. That's what Soros and the globalists have been pushing, clearly. What is their hope there? And shouldn't that then, and I've seen the police actually get it, shouldn't that be what we reach out to the police with? That, hey, we're doing Overwatch. We want to work with you. This is here. You better get operational now to stop this because they need to be the front line with local government. Uh, to identify globalist operatives locally, you name it. So when all this goes down, they understand which side to be on. And I'm serious. I think that's absolutely key. What do you say? Yeah, there's a there's sort of a war within law enforcement that you know Stuart Road Rhodes and the Oath Keepers are certainly right. We we can't turn against the police. The police are going to be required to preserve civilization, um, and they'll be completely you know if they can't watch their backs as Stuart, the way that Stuart puts That's it. That's why the enemy's they, targeting the police. That's why people get mad at me that hate the cops uh, because the cops have done something bad to them. I get it. But the communists want to take them out. Get that, folks? Get that? Right. This is a Marxist takedown. And that we're in, this, we're in this stage, Lenin called it the worse, the better. When they said, like, you know, there's food riots in Leningrad, he said, the worse, the better. You have to create those 1789... You know, bread riots. He said more Paris. blood. He said more blood. Just kill, carnage, random, fear. And in this, and imagine, in the only they didn't have electricity in 1789. They didn't have electricity in 1917. So the linchpins that you would pull out would be, say, the the food factories that bring the bread to Leningrad. That train doesn't make it for a week, and now there's riots. Well, today you don't do necessarily do bread. You go after the grid. You go after the computer system. You go you go after the financial system. Then the bread stops. So. In, in, in the absence of electricity, the computer network, and the financial system, our societies will implode. They, enemies don't need to fire a missile over a city. A missile comes with a return address. Mutual assured de deterrence works. But who will know who hacked our computer grid? Who do we attack if our computer grid is hacked? It, maybe it's anonymous. Maybe it's the Koreans. It can be backtrailed through a third country. It could be an inside so, job. Obama could open the door to China. And it makes it much more likely to happen. The Cold War, mutual assured destruction worked during all the Cold War because every each, each you side You where the knew missiles were coming side. from. But in, in this situation, if our financial system is hacked, if everybody's accounts just goes gibberish haywire and nobody can tr do a transaction, within a week, the, the grid will be down. The stores Matt will Bracken, be you're absolutely right. Down. Five more minutes straight ahead, third hour. Tell everybody you know, tune in, folks. This is serious business. Thank you for listening to this is serious business. I'm going to get this guy back on for two hours to take your calls next week if he can do it. He'll be back. Stay with us. I wrote that liner 19 years ago when my show got syndicated on Genesis. I was already syndicated on a smaller outfit because I just had General Benton Parton, former head of the Air Force, former head of Air Force weapons development, top anti-communist, and he had all the classified info. He ran the HARP program before that, and he said, it's a program, Alex, and they're going to take us over. First, they got to break us down. He had all the terms out of their own operations. And then once they'd done that, they would then take us over and exploit us against the next country. And so he basically said in the you know, down the road, once they first seize the federal government and start collapsing things, you'll be basically deep behind enemy lines in your own country. So there I was 19 years ago riding that liner, hoping we could stave that off. Here we are, and they're trying to put it into place. Let me ask you this, Matt Bracken, and I hope you can come back for an hour and a half, two hours next week. Very impressed with your research. EnemiesFarnAndDomestic.com to read his essays, get the books, everything. Clearly, I understand the world's going to turmoil, population. They've already flipped the switches where things aren't sustainable by design, hoping to ride that crisis in their own words. But looking at this, talking to other former Navy SEALs, uh, former spooks, other, you know, almost everybody I talk to that's been, you know, Delta Force, Green Berets, Navy SEALs, they're all super smart, super cool, the best people you can imagine. They know everything I know and more. And then they still just go, yeah, but the public's too dumbed down. When you talk to all these other folks, what are they thinking? Are they all just trying to dig in for their own families as well? Or, I mean, you know, what do we do? There's a lot of digging in going on. Um, you know, I'm past the age when an active duty guy is still on active duty. Most of the guys that I know from the teams and from, you know, operational background are already like firearms and kind of survivalist mentality. Not all, but most of them. You know, if they don't hunt, they they are still tactical. You know, they're always they're never in con, you know condition green, so to speak. You know, you always have that uh, sheepdog mentality going on. And when it comes to your own, your own family, you know, you have to think about them first. I mean, I 
I can I tell people right off the bat, what about water? You know, people want to talk about guns. I say, what about water? I mean, if, if how long does your city water go if the power goes down? Water, food, diesel. firearms, friends, and getting right with God, they're all important. That's right. And and it's a and this is going to not be, you know, the normalcy bias. We grew up, there has always been electricity. It's just normal human nature to think, therefore, there will always be electricity. We're so domesticated. We're very domesticated. But the problem is, if our electricity is cut off even for a few weeks, we the, the, the big glass dome over us, our civilization shatters in those weeks. Once the stores are looted, there's no restocking them. You know, you, you can't take a diesel part, engine apart and then here comes the zombie apocalypse and put it back together and get it running in a minute. Just I'm on sorry. time delivery means no stockpiles. No stockpiles. And when the 18 wheelers run out of fuel on the freeways and at the truck stops, you know, truck stops will be like a little feudal empire as long as their underground storage tanks are lasting and they've got generators. That's where you'll see all the state troopers at the truck stops. That'll be like the Alamo, last place with light in your county. But, Good um, God. I, oh, you no. Know, no. And I mean, you see the preparations get... by government digging in themselves. Yeah, and the people Why don't we just have... arrest George Soros and Obama and these damn people? Well, the, the people, it's too late. It's, it, it's, the tsunami earthquakes already happened. And now no, we're I just totally agree. Just it's already been set in motion. So I guess we just get to high ground knowing the water's coming. And you try to warn people. You know, I, I'm willing to throw away all my credibility, such as it is, um, I, mean, I wasn't career military. I'm not a big hero. I wasn't like all this stuff that um, it's the guys later after me that have been like in a war footing forever. Believe me. So I don't want to take that kind of credit where it's not. Due. You were in more just, clandestine stuff back then with the but SEALs, it, but, right? But it wasn't. A, I wasn't. I, I wasn't career and, it, and I didn't do anything amazing. I was fortunate to be in SEAL team. It's a wonderful thing. It was an early chapter in my life. But what I'm saying is. There's going to be no escaping it. And we're like the kids at that beach. In His audio just cut out. Okay. Hold on, guys. His audio just cut out. So let's, 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 uh, can we get Stone on too? But I'll come back, finish up with him for 30 seconds or a minute and, if, or, or get him on phone because I don't want it to end like that. I was worried his audio just cut out. We'll be right back. Uh, or we'll get a final comment from Matt Bracken, Enemies Foreign and Domestic.com. That was a powerful interview. That guy really knows what he's talking about. And again, I, I think there's a 10% chance we can have a soft landing in this, maybe 20%. But, but there's crises is already happening all over the world. He's already been proven correct. Ladies and gentlemen, we had Matt Bracken on earlier, and his Skype failed at the end. We have two different Skype systems. And then our other one failed with Roger Stone at the same time. Just an example of how technology is great, but you can't completely depend on it, obviously. So we've got Roger Stone via video Skype, but audio via a phone. Going to Roger Stone here in just a moment. Please understand, folks. There are corporate interests worldwide that are anti-free market that are using global crises to bring in total control. And they work with collaborators in every nation state to do this. We have the communist Chinese, the Pope, the, the radical jihadis in Saudi Arabia, their leadership, all saying we can't have Donald Trump. And now Donald Trump has come out with a powerful um, speech that he just gave in D.C. on foreign affairs that we've covered. We played part of it. I've read the transcript. Very, very powerful uh, he just swept five states. Ted Cruz is technically disqualified. They're talking about changing the rules again. They've got other Republican leadership coming out saying we'll start a third party. Joining us till about 40 after is Roger Stone, the consummate patriot, Trump insider. What an incredible guy. He's written a best-selling book now exposing the Bushes and their crime syndicate, their drug dealing, the CIA, a book exposing the same system with the Clintons. I've talked to top experts that have written books on the subject. They say Stone got info no one ever knew. It's, it's just incredible. Both those books, by the way, available at InfoWarsStore.com or StoneZone.com. And it's so important to support people that are telling the truth. This is the you know confidant of Trump more than 40 years, his wingman. And uh, he joins us to break down what's happening. Such a history. Austria just had patriot nationalist that they're calling extreme right wing. They call Trump that. He's almost too liberal for me in some cases. They call him super right wing. The other group isn't right wing. It's, it's, it's patriot. It's, it's nationalist. It's common sense. Like, hey, I want hot coffee in, 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 you know, in the morning in a warm bed. I mean, you know, it's, they, they try to take reality and invert it like it's dirty. But Trump just dominated. He's come out and said Hillary would be five points if she was a man. Well, yeah, like, 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 like Jeb Bush was five points. They say, oh, that's sexist. They are in panic mode. This is so exciting, so historical. I don't even know what to say at this point. Let's go to Roger Stone.
he'll tell us where he is. He's always all over the U.S. working like 18 hours a day. I mean, I, I get text messages from this guy at 6 a.m. and 3 a.m. at night. I tell you, Trump ought to give this guy a medal. Roger Stone, great to have you on, my friend. It is just so exciting what's happened. I'm going to try to shut up till 33 after when we take a few calls with their questions at 800-259-9231. First-time callers, quick question for Roger Stone, 800-259-9231. But until then, sir, congratulations on your work. Congratulations to Donald Trump. Congratulations to the American people. He just gains momentum. Uh, so many questions, but I'm just going to let you take the helm, sir. Well, first of all, Donald Trump deserves enormous credit for the big win last night. Uh, and it was sweeping, breaking more than 50 percent in every state. Uh, it was uh, it demonstrates uh, why I think Trump is, in fact, the candidate the Democrats are afraid of, because he runs well in the industrial northeast uh, and uh, the Middle West uh, and those states that have been ravaged by NAFTA and now that would be ravaged by TPP and Ted Cruz's uh, expedited trade globalist deal, TPA. So uh, it was a big, big night for Donald Trump. It was also a big night for his team. They are living off the land. They're running a true grassroots campaign. Uh, the Pennsylvania situation is particularly interested because, uh, interesting because you had really two primaries, a delegate primary and a preferential primary. Trump ran away with the preferential primary, but in order to vote, for the Trump delegates, you had to know who the delegates were. Uh, so a massive education project there. Uh, two top political operatives, David Urban uh, and uh, Jim Schultz, along respected federal and state Republican operatives, uh, kind of parachuted in there at the last minute and uh, worked with the local Trump people, who were very enthusiastic, to build a very solid ground game, a true grassroots operation. Uh, very impressive. So uh, it, it shows again that the Northeast, uh, like the Midwest, is Trump country. And so is the South. I mean, people just love Trump. And I've got to interrupt you. Looking at the front of Report.com, Roger, uh, he looks so presidential in that uh, foreign policy speech. I mean, wow. If people wanted to be impressed with him being focused, that was it. I want that guy to represent me. Well, and it was the perfect tone. I mean, this speech really defined Trump's foreign policy. Now you can see uh, that Richard Haas of the Council on Foreign Relations has had no effect whatsoever on his thinking. Trump is a bold nationalist. He is uh, for American sovereignty. He's for the restoration of American power. He's against uh, some globalist yes. scheme. Uh, and, mostly, and most importantly, he is most definitely not a neocon. He's a non-interventionist. That's not an isolationist. But he quotes John Quincy Adams in his speech, saying we shouldn't go looking for trouble around the world. Yeah. That's the guy I like. If I like Trump before, I'm in love now. I you, Roger, what is it like for you as one of his chief... This is history happening. An epic battle with the collectivists and the communist Chinese and the, and the jihadis telling us we can't have Trump and the sickening mentally ill left. I, I mean, this is incredible. Uh, it, it's really uh, something I have never seen before in American politics. And Trump has said this a number of times. It's not about him. Uh, it's it's about uh, a revolution. It's about a last best chance to save the country. So um, a big contest with Indiana coming up. This is going to be pivotal. This is Ted Cruz's last uh, hurrah. But uh, some breaking news. Today at 4 o'clock uh, Eastern, Ted Cruz will announce that Carly Fiorina will be his running mate for vice president. Wait, has that been announced or are you giving us inside baseball? Uh, uh, well, uh, it, it is known to those of us who are uh, who are professional. Okay, so uh, we're going to run with the headline. Uh, 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 Roger Stone, um, Cruz will announce Fiorina as running mate at 4 o'clock. Uh, that, is, that is what I predict. Now, let's go through that Put it for out. a moment. Go ahead. She's John McCain's chief issue advisor. She, uh, as the head of uh, executive at Hewlett Packard, let me just put it this way, layoffs, outsourcing, golden parachute. She's Mitt Romney in heels. Uh, she tried this in California. She was ignominiously defeated when those very arguments were made. She is a rock rib member of the establishment. Uh, I like the way she cuffs Hillary Clinton around, but she's not doing that for her country or her party. She's doing it for herself. So another globalist, uh, another international. Yeah, she's somebody that comes and sells off Hewlett Packard and downsizes it, and, and they call her a genius in the mainstream media. Well, and not only that, but there's very strong evidence 
that she broke the Iranian sanction rules doing business in that part of the world. So this is the last woman uh, that you want as... Oh, I forgot president. she's she's been on the payroll of the Iranians. Yeah, no, this is, a, this is a, a horrific choice by Ted Cruz. Now, there's every possibility, Alec, you have so much reach and influence that Ted Cruz will hear about this and change his mind before 4 o'clock, but I rather doubt it. Wow, okay, please continue. Roger Stone, uh, this is incredible. Please continue. Well, uh, Indiana will be pivotal. I don't see Carly Fiorina giving uh, Ted Cruz uh, any bump there. I mean, this is, uh, I guess Cruz thinks this is Reagan-esque. I mean, it's like when Ronald Reagan picked uh, Dick Schweiker, who turned out to be a, a very fine man. And by the way, one of the most important members of Congress, skeptical, skeptical about the Warren Commission and skeptical about the, uh, the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, and uh, a free thinker, uh, a, a solid Second Amendment man, ironically, but a liberal Republican on social issues. I got to know he and his wife, Claire, who you may know was once Miss Claire on Romper Room, uh, very, very fine people, later served in Ronald Reagan's cabinet. Uh, but this is not Dick Schweiker. This is someone who has the globalist stamp. Uh, and I, I don't see, other than her gender, what she brings to a ticket. I guess what Cruz is saying is that he couldn't beat Hillary alone. Maybe I could beat her with this woman on the ticket. Sure, now he's going to pull what Trump said. I mean, I'd love to have a woman I believed in, like a Michelle Bachman would be great, or uh, uh, you know, somebody like the former governor uh, of Alaska, Sarah Palin, who are patriots. I mean, it's not that we're against women. It's, it's true. Hillary can hardly talk. She's, she's got all this corruption. She's about to probably be indicted. All this stuff's going on, and Trump says, listen, if she was a man, she'd be 5%, and they say he's anti-woman. No, he told the truth. Your take on his statement. No, I think it's uh, exactly why people love Donald Trump, because he's blunt. He tells you what he really thinks, and it's the God's honest truth. Look, her entire campaign is predicated uh, on the premise that she will get a disproportionate uh, number of votes among women. And I say to you, Alex, when women learn of her real abuse of women, the way she has bullied and intimidated and threatened Bill's sexual assault victims, his serial... This came over. By the way, let me stop you right there. That's why you're banned on CNN and MSNBC and everywhere else. That's why you're banned is because they're so scared yes. they'll bring that up. Stay right there. Roger yes. Stone, StoneZone.com. We'll back in four minutes. We're trying to reconnect with him on Skype. StoneZone.com. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. This is the Infowar. This is the tip of the spear. All right, coming up in the next segment, you're going to be able to ask Roger Stone your questions. That's a real wild card. So that's coming up, 800-259-9231. I'm Alex Jones, your host. After he leaves us at about 45 after or so, I'm going to hit a bunch of other science and health news, world news. Uh, there is so much to go over. But the system is so scared of Donald Trump. Uh, what are the next big pitfalls, Roger Stone? What else do you expect them to pull what are they going to do now? I mean, he's, he's, got, he's going to get, they're projecting, as you predicted, the 1,238 or 37. They've now got Republican chiefs out. We'll run with a third party or we'll ignore that. Uh, but I think uh, more and more, even as Newt Gingrich said, look, you can't ignore this. It's going to blow up in your face if you try to steal the election from Trump. What does your gut tell you, Roger Stone? Well, the uh, Cruz operatives are still talking about going into uh, the Rules Committee uh, and uh, passing a rule. Uh, that would uh, knock out some of Donald Trump's delegates. And then that question comes to the convention floor prior to the first ballot uh, in the approval or disapproval of the proposed rules. This is why I've been talking about the so-called Trojan horse delegates. While Donald Trump may have a majority for president on the first ballot, I think the anti-Trump forces will have a majority on the floor on questions of rules uh, and uh, credentials. Uh, there's any number of ways to steal this nomination by an adversarial uh, a report from either one of those committees that uh, use trickery to unseat validly elected Trump delegates. So I still think that that is the establishment game plan. That's why we uh, started StopTheSteal.org, uh, the uh, rally and march, which is now scheduled for July 18th. Uh, we have received our permit from the city of Cleveland. Um, we have a number of co-sponsors beyond Stop the Steal, including Citizens for Trump, Women for Trump, Bikers for Trump, Veterans for Trump, uh, and uh, WeWillWalk.org. Uh, uh, 
so the list of co-sponsors for the rally, uh, a peaceful, nonviolent rally where the object is numbers. Let us show the Republican establishment our grassroots. Everybody's got a book to be there now. This is history. I'm going to be there, be speaking. Roger Stone, you need to be part of this, folks. So stand up for free speech, for the voting, for all of it. And expanding on this, you've always got big breaking news. You've always got inside baseball tidbits. Give us a bone. Uh, what's coming up in the next few days, the next few weeks? What else should, should we, we be watching for? Well, Indiana is crucial. Uh, even in my most conservative count, and I'm keeping my own kind of private count, uh, I currently have Donald Trump, worst case, at 1250. So, uh, and I know that the Republican national chairman, um, who I think is kind of playing a double game where he is conciliatory to uh, uh, Trump and his uh, campaign people in private, uh, but he is working behind the scenes against us. That's my opinion, by the way, uh, not the official opinion of anyone else. Uh, but uh, I do think that there is, uh, you know, a, a, a need to show the politicians inside the hall what they will be losing, the energy uh, and the diversity uh, they, that they will be losing if they euchre this nomination away from Donald Trump. So you're basically... And others warning them that, listen, Trump is going to win. He can destroy Hillary. What are you doing? You're going to destroy yourself. Don't do this. Yeah, I mean, I think it is. Uh, look, I have suggested that we uh, go to the delegate hotels with copies of the pledge. People from Pennsylvania go to the Pennsylvania delegate hotel, track down your elected representatives and ask them to take the pledge. It's voluntary. They don't need to take it. They don't have to take it. But if they don't, then the media can ask them why the votes of the people in Pennsylvania. We're simply don't canvassing matter. who's going to represent the people and who's going to steal it. First Amendment, right of association. And that's why all these big channels are throwing hissy fits, claiming that you're a terrorist. Yeah, no, it's an absurdity. Uh, it's a classic example of the mainstream media mugging, where, where CNN took a bite out of context. Uh, if they played my entire thought, even, they would have seen that I renounce violence. Uh, I'm a veteran of the 1968 Nixon campaign. I saw what violence uh, did to Hubert Humphrey's campaign, and therefore, I think the greater You've never promoted it, you've never promoted it, and it's pure horse manure. It's the left running around beating people up and shooting cops in the back of the head. Well, and the irony here, of course, is that those who are coming to Cleveland for violence are the paid agitators from MoveOn.org and Black Lives Matter and other lefty uh, Clinton-supporting Soros-funded groups. They're there to provoke violence, to incite violence, and then the mainstream media will falsely blame that violence. That's right. Stay Donald there. Trump. Let's talk about the Soros false flag straight ahead and take phone calls with Roger Stone on the road joining us. I'm Alex Jones. Your phone calls straight ahead. Rob, Adrian, Jeffrey, uh, Jerry, James, Sean, stay with us. Infowars.com. Roger Stone's our guest. Infowars.com's the website. His site is stonezone.com. Before he leaves us in about 10 minutes or so, he's going to give us the different sites to be there in Cleveland or to be involved or to report election fraud. But we're starting to win. I think Trump's been winning the votes, obviously, but we're defeating the entire machine, the entire corrupt world uh, that's fighting against the true populist. We're already seeing populism spread all over Europe. Austria just went to a populist. They're panicking. Who says evil always has to win? Who says we can't start to turn the tide? The mainstream media has a 6% approval rating in the Associated Press poll. <laughs> they're dead. They're zombies. We're just telling them they're dead politically. Roger Stone's our guest. Uh, Roger, you know, the big question I've got, one big one I forgot to get to, and I hope you can really give us, again, the inside scoop on this. I know you like to stay focused on the campaign, focused on our freedoms. You don't like to get into what's happening inside the campaign, even if you disagree with some of the people involved. Uh, as we've talked privately, I'm not going to get into it, but will you please, because a third of the media's coverage is about what's happening in the Trump campaign and your former business partner, uh, you know, your good friend, uh, you know, coming in and really, I think, helping the situation. Uh, the current head that was kind of sidelined for a while, but we're told he's been brought back. Mainstream media is saying there's a fight inside and Trump has kind of, you know, told Paul and others, hey, back off. You don't run the show. What's true? What isn't? There's a Politico article. Trump rejects new advisors push to make him presidential. Um, frustrated with uh, Manafort, the GOP frontrunner shifts some power back to campaign manager Lewandowski. 
All I know is it's always about Lewandowski, and he makes it about himself. I'm not against Lewandowski, but, but please just be honest with us. I know you don't like to infight, but this is already an issue. I mean, sometimes I hear more about Lewandowski from Lewandowski than I hear about Trump. That doesn't sound good, so please address this. Yeah, I think this kind of backbiting really doesn't serve Donald Trump or the campaign well. I mean, Alex... Uh, in 1979, I was recruited by John Sears to work for Ronald Reagan. Uh, and I really liked and respected John Sears, who was Reagan's first campaign manager. After the New Hampshire primary, on the eve of the primary, actually, Governor Reagan decided to fire John Sears and hire Bill Casey as his new campaign manager. Now, I had my reservations about Casey, but it occurred to me that I worked for Ronald Reagan, and my job was to elect Ronald Reagan, and my job was to coordinate with whoever Ronald Reagan chose. I think uh, in Paul Manafort, uh, Donald Trump has chosen a superb professional, someone who has actually elected president, both here and abroad. Uh, the mainstream media, the New York Times, is now attacking him for his business dealings. He hasn't been a lobbyist for 30 years, by the way. Uh, but that's because they are panicked about Trump's success and they see a non-amateur at the helm of their convention operation uh, where they thought they were going to roll the Trump people as a bunch of naive uh, rubes who had never been to it. Instead, a you and Manfred on record helped get Reagan in and defeat the last time they tried a coup. That's why they're so upset. Yeah, so uh, look, I, I think that, uh, that, that these kind of process stories are meaningless. Paul Manafort, because uh, I've known him for, you know, uh, most of my adult life, he has his nose down focusing on winning delegates, focusing on uh, trying to take a political... Not process. running around talking about how he wasn't in a fight with a woman. It, look, this isn't about Louis Korandowski, uh, and it's not about uh, Paul Manafort, it's not about Roger Stone, and it's not about Alex Jones. It's about the only man who can make this country great again, the only person with the stature and the name ID and the forum and the gut uh, and, frankly, the courage to take on the political establishment and turn this country around. And he's doing uh, it, and they can't stand it. So, I mean, obviously Trump's running the campaign, but people keep asking, is Lewandowski in? Is he out? I mean, people want to know. It is my understanding that uh, he will continue to work on the campaign and continue to retain uh, his current title. No one person can run an entire presidential campaign and a convention. There's plenty of work. Uh, for sure, I get it. You probably have 20 people. So let me ask you this, then we'll move on to a few calls and let you go. I know you're a busy man. Again, Roger Stone, consummate Trump, confidant, insider, on this today. Looking at this... I think Trump's really completely turned the tide. I think he's dominating. I see it. I see them panicking. Is that an accurate statement? Well, uh, let's just look at the trajectory of the campaign just a few weeks ago. Uh, he lost Wisconsin. Uh, he then lost North Dakota. He got shut out in Colorado. And about the same time, we learned about the stealing in Louisiana, where Trump won the primary with almost 40 percent of the vote, but did not even get close to 40 percent of the delegates. Then they started stealing delegates next door in Georgia. So that was uh, our trajectory. Now to where we are today, an incredible victory in New York, a smashing victory where uh, real grassroots, particularly upstate, real pros like Carl Palladino and John Haggerty and uh, Michael Caputo, these guys know what they're doing. They're not they're not amateurs. Uh, and they uh, they had a very, very good candidate. Uh, you uh, saw last night in the sweep of the northeastern United States, uh, Pennsylvania, Maryland. Trump breaking 50 in all these states. What happened to the notion that Trump had a ceiling that he couldn't get beyond? They kept saying, uh, as we narrow, he's going to be done. No, as it narrows, he rises. Yeah, and what's interesting, of course, is that uh, it, uh, before you could say, well, when you don't have a multi-candidate field, he's done, he's cooked. Well, now we really don't have a multi-candidate field because John Kasich um, is not a real candidate. He is... Uh, the Soros running uh, uh, running dog. Yeah, what about those two uh, combining forces? Then i got to take a few calls, because I, I promise. But sure. what about th those two joining forces? Well, this is not unprecedented, Alex. In 1968, uh, believe it or not, Governor Ronald Reagan and Governor Nelson Rockefeller had a back-channel discussion and were working together to try to block former Vice President Richard Nixon's comeback on the first ballot. It did not work. Uh, but it is not unprecedented. 
But let's be very clear. Ted Cruz is now dealing with the most left-wing candidate in the race, a guy propped up by George Soros, uh, a guy who supported uh, NAFTA, uh, uh, a guy who supported the expansion of Obamacare, uh, a governor who supports common cause. So Cruz really shows his strength if he's prepared to get in bed with John Kasich, unless, of course, Ted Cruz is a, glo- a globalist just like Kasich, who talks a good game, but on the big issues facing us, trade, immig- immigration, and so on, he's a globalist. He-, he is part of the international clique. There's no doubt that Bush is running his campaign, backing him. He was a sleeper the whole time. A few quick calls, and Mr. Stone's going to leave us. Uh, let's go to let's go to Rob. Rob in New Jersey. You're on the air worldwide. Go ahead, Rob. Oh, uh, yes. I'm uh, Alex, and thank you for taking my call. Yes, uh, I just have a question for Mr. Stone um, concerning the, the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations. I know that you uh, you both are very well aware of what's going on. Uh, we, you know that Trump did meet with uh, Paul Haas. Uh, oh, it's Richard was, Haas. Yeah, we've talked all about Richard that. Richard Haas, excuse me. Right. Uh, and evidently, you know, he had a meeting with him. What is your opinion uh, if you think that the, the elite and the establishment – are going to come with uh, a, a clampdown on Trump and say, look, we're going to give you this nomination, but we're going to place one of our people, one of our operatives, as the vice president. Sure, okay, okay, I get your question. What about this being a replay of the 1980 with George Herbert Walker Bush? I mean, I think the answer is Trump's already said no to Haas, and Haas came out and attacked him a week after they talked. Uh, Stone? Yeah, I mean, look, today's speech shows that the Council on Foreign Relations uh, has no influence on Donald Trump. He remains a Reaganite in terms of his foreign policy views. He's a hardliner, he is, uh, he is, uh, but he's not a neocon. He doesn't want to rush us off to war in places that it's Peace unjustified. through strength. He's not going to start wars, but he's not going to put up with any b- BS. So a real basic Reagan-Eisenhower doctrine, peace through strength. Uh, he had lunch with Richard Haas, frankly, because uh, Joe Scarborough kept badgering him to do it. So he had lunch with the guy. He was actually not fully aware of Haas's uh, neocon credentials, a cheerleader for the war in Iraq. Uh, and today tells you that Trump is his own man. Haas came Trump. out and attacked him a week after. That tells everything I need to know. Thank you, Rob. Good question. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Keith in Maryland. Keith, you're on the air worldwide with Roger Stone. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. I just wanted to uh, say something else. CNN 10 minutes ago just announced that Fair Arena is going to be, uh, or Cruz is going to announce Fair Arena is his running mate at 4 o'clock. And you heard that My before us. Is, you heard that first. Hope they put it on the site. We Stone said it first. Go ahead. Oh, I know. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I know he said it first. But anyway, um, the, since the Casey Cruz alliance basically broke down as, as soon as it was announced, do you think this is a, a move by Cruz to try and get somebody else to form a two? To, you know, a dual front against uh, Trump while he attacks him from one side and she attacks him from the other. So, like I said, well, obviously, it's, it's, it's the whole Hillary like- leftist, oh, look at that. I got a woman here. Just total gimmickry, in my view. Uh, and if Fiorina couldn't get 5%, just like Hillary wouldn't up against Trump. Uh, same deal. And there's the proof right there. Roger Stone? Well, uh, look, it's a desperate gambit. He needed to uh, throw a Hail Mary pass of some kind because he's finished. He cannot mathematically catch Donald Trump on the first ballot. It's not going to happen. And he's worried uh, about the, uh, his new best friend, uh, Neil and Jeb Bush and uh, Mitt Romney and Paul Singer and the other uh, uh, establishment insiders dumping him on a second ballot to move to someone that they prefer, Paul Ryan or maybe Jeb himself. So uh, he, it is interesting that only days after I uh, came out and suggested a loyalty pledge, a voluntary loyalty pledge that Trump supporters uh, could ask Trump delegates to take, Ted Cruz came out with a loyalty pledge for his delegates. That tells me that he's worried that Jeb and Neil are going to dump him on the second ballot. Absolutely. Uh, and, and then even more disturbing, Alex, to be honest with you, a week ago, I believe on this show, I referred to the California primary as the big enchilada. You did, yes. Only days later, Ted Cruz refers to the California primary as the big enchilada. He's obsessed with you. Sen- All he does is talk Senator, about you. Senator, get your own shtick. Stop using my material. It is true that when I see him on TV or radio, it's like he takes what you say and he twists it. 
Which, but I guess with a lot of yeah. sociopaths like Glenn Beck and him, that's why I, I was asked why he uses my information, but twisted. They say, listen, sociopaths don't have any original thought, especially psychopaths, because so they just steal something. Is that what you're getting to? Yeah, in, in essence. I mean, look, the, the guy is, uh, he has made all of these uh, 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 nasty personal attacks against me, uh, but he's a confection. He, he's a Harvard, uh, Princeton, uh, Wall Street funded, oil and gas industry funded insider. He's smart, but not uh, sincere. And he, so he steals from a sincere person like you, just like Beck steals from I. Uh, let's talk to Adrian in Missouri. Our guest has got to go in a few minutes. Adrian in Missouri, you're on the air with Roger Stone of StoneZone.com. Hi, yes. Hi, Alice. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you. Um, Mr. Stone, we already know that the establishment is willing to pull out all stops just to try to stop Trump from getting the nomination or maybe even the presidency. Um, I was thinking maybe, do you think that they will try to make some type of, of fake attempt on Obama's life just so they can try to post, postpone Good point. the election? Good point. You know, yeah, they can pull I, any stunt. I, I, I mean, they can I, crash I, economies to stop Trump. They've said that they'll never put up with it. These are arrogant kleptocrats. Yeah, what type of stunts haunt you in the middle of the night that they might pull, uh, Stone? Well, uh, look, I think they're capable of anything, including martial law. Uh, the, the establishment is petrified that the Trump wave is coming, and they see no way to stop it. I pray for him every night. I think it is very brave of him to continue to campaign in public. We can't even begin to imagine how many death threats he must be getting. So uh, I salute his courage uh, and his uh, bravery uh, to go out there and spearhead this movement for reform. Uh, at the same time, uh, you see, uh, you know, uh, shills like Mark Levin and Glenn Beck being paid millions of dollars. To, to continue to promote Ted Cruz. As their I mean, ratings I mean, plunge, as their ratings plunge, they are destroying themselves because their grassroots audience is saying no. Yeah, so, I mean, Mark Levin does the shady backroom book deal where he sells books at inflated prices to a Cruz patron, and they, they purchase his voice. Uh, it, it, in the old days, they would call this payola. I've written this for the Daily Caller. Uh, and Levin calls the Daily Caller an obscure website. No, it's a respected conservative website. So, um, some I mean, people, Tucker Carlson's a Fox said, pundit. Everybody knows the Daily Caller is amazingly respected. They, they're yeah, incredibly so, uh, accurate. It, this is part of the Cruz uh, obsession. I think a man lays awake at night worrying about what I'm going to do next. And you know what, Alex? He should. You should worry about that. Absolutely. So you lay awake at night thinking how sad you are for him. He lay awake at night. Adrian, great question. Uh, in closing, Mr. Show, we got more callers. I know you've got to go. Just thank you for all your hard work for this country and what you're doing. And, and obviously, this will become a big national issue. So please flush it out for a minute or two. You're saying they could do anything to try to stop Trump. I agree. They've said they'll do anything, including stealing elections, uh, canceling the popular vote. Hillary's doing it to Bernie Sanders. I see polls out where a third of them are saying they'll go with Trump. Uh, double the number of African Americans that went for Romney are saying they'll go and are going in primaries for Trump. Uh, Trump is the majority of Hispanic voters in primaries. So this is a this is a dream. It's it, it's populism that unites us all. We talk about martial law. Yeah, economic emergency, a new war, uh, some type of October surprise. Not that Obama's running, but running for the establishment. What type of false flags or October surprises in your you know deep brain? You know, they call the, the IBM computer deep blue and the deep stone, uh, you know, being inside all this, watching it, sitting at the foot of Richard Nixon. What would you be doing if you were them? Well, let me say this, Alex. I'm not certain, but if I was certain, I wouldn't admit it. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and therefore, I'm, I'm going to duck your question and talk about uh, the importance uh, of what we're trying to do in Cleveland. Uh, I ask uh, everybody who supports Donald Trump, who supports this uh, this uh, uh, march to change America, to go to stopthesteal.org uh, and get the details. Uh, this is a peaceful, uh, nonviolent rally. Uh, if you can't make it to Cleveland, we understand, but make a small contribution or even a large contribution to help us pay for buses uh, and housing uh, and the march. And put up stopthesteal.org uh, flyers that you've got all over the country. Let's get aggressive. We don't, but listen, I know you've never dodged a question, but you're the one that brought up the martial law point. I'm mean, seriously, what type of civil emergency, what type of October surprise do you think anybody could pull? I mean, saying they'll steal the election from me is pretty damn big, but what else? 
Well, they could stage an international incident in which everybody has to rally around the president and then use that as a pretext to cancel the election. Uh, I also have, as you know, very deep concern about these computerized voter machines that are going to be in the key states like Michigan and Ohio and New York and Pennsylvania, where Donald Trump and only Donald Trump is competitive. Uh, so uh, we've got a lot of mountains to climb. But uh, as Nelson Rockefeller found out on the way, on his way to the presidency, you've got to get nominated for president first. I really think this is historic. Donald Trump is going to get 1,237 votes on the first ballot. There will be no second ballot. That is my bold prediction. And you notice that's what Trump says. Let me throw this at you again. I'm not sure which part of that big question you, quote, dodged, but, but, but to be specific, you've said it. You wouldn't be surprised anything past martial law. We know the Soros groups and others are funding racial division, the Beyonce videos. This is clearly governmental. Get Americans fighting with each other to distract them from black unemployment doubling under Obama. Uh, what would you, because we want to know. I mean, you've, you've proven to be uncannily accurate, like you've got a crystal ball. So make a statement like that. What's the calculus behind it? <laughs> saying, it's a pop, saying it's a possibility. You're not saying martial law is coming. They'll say that now. <clears throat> what is the calculus behind it? And it isn't just Obama that could pull some stunts. Uh, you know, what could they do? What, activate groups with the media to go out and burn down cities? I mean, what do you say? I mean, we've already heard people well, saying well, they're going to burn well, down well, cities I, and riot, if, you know, Black Lives Matter if he, if he gets elected. I think that we understand the play here. The, the Clintonites are very concerned because Donald Trump has a very strong appeal to more than a third of the Bernie Sanders voters. These are blue-collar folks who have been left out by the New World Order economy. Uh, NAFTA and uh, presumably TPP and TPA, which Ted Cruz supports, uh, would uh, destroy our economy, are destroying their jobs and livelihoods. So those voters are susceptible to Trump. Therefore, we invade his rallies uh, and we brand him as a bigot and a racist and a misogynist in order to disqualify him from these voters who are probably slightly left of center. Uh, that's what they're afraid of. Now, Donald Trump is not going to get the hardcore leftists who are voting for Bernie. That's not what I'm saying. But his populist, uh, uh, blue-collar uh, Democrat supporters who realize uh, that these international trade deals are killing us, they are going to be available. Uh, and they like Trump's confidence uh, in his uh, nationalism. That's their concern. They must. Destroy sure. Trump among those voters. Oh, 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 last question, I got to go. Is the establishment out of bullets? I mean, I know they're going to try to bring up the mafia stuff, as you predicted. They did that. They bring up, oh, he hates Hillary. He said she'd be at 5% if she was a Republican nominee. It's true. Or, you know, a man. Uh, what else are they going to cook up? I mean, I would expect some big fake scandal right before the convention so the Republicans can act like, well, we don't like to steal popular vote, but we're doing it for the right reason. I mean, are we going to hear that? He had like a KKK baby that he gave birth to or that he's an alien or I mean, what are we going to hear? Look, I, I honestly think everything about Donald Trump is known. He is one of the most examined human beings on the planet. Uh, I think what happens here, though, is the mainstream media seeks to suppress the truth about Bill and Hillary Clinton, uh, their defense on the Clinton Foundation thievery. You have no proof. That's that's their defense. In other words, you can't. Prove it. I took a million dollars and I gave the person who gave me the million dollars a multi-million dollar federal contract the next day. So the answer is but get on the attack, but attack you can't Hillary. Prove that those are related events. So we should all be defending Trump instead of guessing what new attack will happen. The answer is ignore that, move forward with the attack on the true criminals of Benghazi, Fast and Furious, everything else. You, you, you never win a campaign on defense. This has to be about Hillary. She will seek to make it about Trump. But Trump has the bully pulpit. You see, when uh, when a Steve Malsberg or a or a Kurt Schleister, two friends of mine, conservative commentators, or when I go on CNN and you begin to ask talk about the facts regarding Hillary Clinton's abuse of women, they unplug your microphone. Now they won't be able to unplug Donald Trump's microphone. Good point. They're not going to be able to stop the signal, and he's willing to attack her. He has got complete waves. And I am proud to be associated with this. This is history. And God bless you, Roger Stone. Look forward to speaking to you again next week. Anything you've got to add, any extra time, we'll tape it, whatever. Please continue to give us these amazing exclusives. Uh, Stonezone.com. And as you said, StopTheSteal.org. This is history. Folks, you want to be part of it right now. I, I, I mean, undoubtedly, Roger, this is people's chance to really be part of 1776 Part 2.
Well, and we may have a surprise for Ted Cruz, who has been very actively, I think, out uh, using the the bosses to steal votes. Uh, I've been working with the Trump ballot security project. Um, we are documenting literally thousands of examples of voter irregularity in Oklahoma and Utah and Texas and other states. Now, the Trump people or any delegate may elect to go to the credentials committee uh, and uh, sure. and seek the removal of Cruz delegates that were elected through fraud. So two can play this game, exactly what happened in the 1952 election. So those who want to help that effort go to Trump ballot security. You can read exactly what we're doing and why it is potentially and possibly very valuable to the Trump all right, I, I, we only got a minute left, but since you raise it, why don't you personally address Ted Cruz? I mean, he should have already dropped out. They admit that he can't win by the, their own rules now. He's a loser. He said Trump was a loser. Lion Ted's the loser. Roger Stone, 60 seconds, your address to the loser. Yeah, very simple. He calls me a dirty trickster. It takes one to know one, but I'm not running for president. Thank you, Alex. All right, Roger Stone, talk to you soon. God bless. Wow, that was a news-making interview. That's going to be all over the headlines tonight and tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> I can only cherry on top of that with a little clip of Trump uh, in his victory speech last night. Uh, let's, let's just have this little maraschino cherry right on top, that big, delicious vanilla ice cream with chocolate sauce all over it. Uh, let's just uh, go ahead and play Trump talking about Hillary. Well, I think the only card she has is the woman's card. She's got nothing else going. And frankly, if Hillary Clinton were a man, I don't think she'd get 5% of the vote. The only thing she's got going is the woman's card. And the beautiful thing is women don't like her, okay? And look how well I did with women tonight, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. The globalists think they're the only people that are humans and can fight. And they put us in a trance and TV and ESPN and we're supposed to waddle around like Wally, -E, you know, on the galactic, uh, you know, endless cruise ship here weighing 900 pounds spiritually. I'm not doing it. My shadow is not taller than my soul. And I'm not going to be part of this. And history is happening. And I just love seeing these rats run like they've run so many times in history when the good people get off the bench and decide to stomp them into the collective ground. And supporting Trump doesn't offer some panacea or utopia. I want to be clear. I'm not some communist selling, you know, blue sky here, pie in the sky. I'm selling the animating contest of liberty that you've got to decide to buy from yourself. Speaking of buying stuff, we're about to start the uh, fourth hour with David and I. I want to plug here at the end of this transmission. i got a few stories. I'll hit in the next segment, a few more calls from Costa Rica, you name it. But please go to InfoWarsStore.com and take advantage of 30 40% off the very best storable foods out there. Uh, the InfoWars Select, powered by My Patriot Supply. InfoWarsStore.com. Anthroplex, sold out for months. Uh, is basically pretty much the same formulation, but dry herbs at a lower price as um, Super Mel Vitality that is selling out as we speak, I should add. Uh, so Anthroplex is there. It works on women, too, but it says it's for men because that's the market. But it's just really amazing in your purchase sports broadcast. Brain Force X2. Uh, we have the Skeletal Defense Pack discounted. Uh, we also have a lot of other great products at InfoWarsLife.com. And Secret 12, True Organic Methylcobalamin is back in stock. InfoWarsLife.com. Free shipping on orders above 50 bucks and 10% off with auto ship. The revolution funding starts at InfoWarsStore.com. And I am raging to take on the globalists. Thanks for the support. We'll be back. Just as the enemy's already launched a global collapse, like a tsunami that happened in an earthquake across the Pacific Ocean, it'll take two weeks to come across, metaphorically. Our resistance has already won giant battles that we're already seeing the reverberations of, but the big shock waves, the big 200 megaton bombs we detonated inside the globalist operation is just a white flash on the horizon. Because light travels faster than sound. It travels at the speed of light. But coming is the shockwave. That's not hype. That's reality. But evil can't help it. It wants to take over. It's got to tell you you're worthless. It's got to tell you you can't fight back. Because it knows you hold the keys of the kingdom. Right up here. And in your heart. In your gut.
We got a lot of phones here, and I, I, I know good and well that Devin Knight's going to want to take your calls and ask him. I'm sure he will. Uh, he's got a big show lined up for you, but to Joshua and Sean and uh, Mel and Kim, uh, Mel's in Costa Rica. I should go to them first and go to break it in this transmission where I'm hosting. Mel in Costa Rica, thank you for holding her on the air. Yes, uh, Mr. Jones, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry you couldn't get to Stone, but I tell you, I love taking calls. You guys brought up better questions than well, I did. I'll tell you, you know, I'll tell you, uh, Mr. Jones, it's time for the Info Warriors to turn up the heat, and we all got to think way outside the box and make sure that Hillary Clinton never sees that White House. And I came up with an idea that I think is explosive on a, on a level that it, it would be equivalent to dropping 29 Hiroshima bombs on the political establishment, okay? Listen to me very carefully. If you could pull this off, my friend, I, I, my hat is off to you. Get Matt Drudge on your show to interview Mr. Trump. Reason being simple. Mr. Trump has mentioned Matt Drudge at least a dozen times on, uh, on his speeches and his campaign trail. No, it's sensational. I come in here. It's in my studio. I'm not even here. Uh, or I'm in the control room. I get one question. And then Matt Drudge interviews Donald Trump. Sensational. Because the fusion, the media would attack it because it's my show, which is great. They still think they're the establishment, and can, you know it's, it's great to be anti-establishment. It's Drudge that nobody ever sees, but he's actually seen, hadn't been seen in like a decade or almost, you know, in person. Even with the interview here, he did it in the shadows. And then Donald Trump, that is, or even if he doesn't do it here, Matt Drudge interviews Donald Trump. Sin, guaranteed it'll happen instantly if, if Drudge will do it. Trump will do it. Drudge might not. That is, so, I'm going to, I never even call Matt Drudge. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna. I don't. I don't want to bug him. I think I'm gonna call him. He's he's probably watching right now. Uh, but that is a genius idea. Maybe he'll put the question up on Drudge. You know, Drudge interviews Trump. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I love the humor of our audience, Mel. Congratulations. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Wednesday, April 27th, 2016, fourth hour. I'm David Knight. Well, we have some interesting developments after last night. You know, in my opinion, in a lot of people's opinion, Ted Cruz has always been constitutionally ineligible for presidency. Now he is mathematically ineligible. We've got two choices here before us today. We've got either Donald Trump or Don Quixote. That's what I tweeted out last night. The reality hasn't set in for Ted Cruz or his supporters like Mark Levin. Look at the difference that we're hearing from them from just a couple of weeks ago when Ted Cruz won a primary in Wisconsin. And of course, you know, when you win Wisconsin, that's kind of like winning Washington, D.C. Wisconsin is the GOP RNC headquarters. That's where Paul Ryan and Reince Priebus and the Scott Walker machine are all located, along with their network of local talk radio places. So when you win that, that wasn't, as Mark Levin said, a crushing victory uh, for Cruz and a crushing defeat for Donald Trump. No, that's the way he put it. And he said at the time, he said, well, there's no expectation that Ted Cruz is going to win in New York, although he can do better in New York now. Yeah, well, he got in third place out of three. And he had an average last night of uh, just under 15 percent. OK, but that doesn't stop him, doesn't stop his loyal supporters like Glenn Beck or Mark Levin. Let's take a look at some of the numbers and where we stand now. 1237, the magic number. There are 616 delegates remaining. As we stand right now, Donald Trump needs to get only 46% of the remaining delegates. Ted Cruz, however, needs to get 110% of the remaining delegates. And John Kasich needs 176. I think he's going to go for 200. He's going <laughs> to, pretty soon he's going to need 200% of the remaining delegates. This is the common core math that Ted Cruz and his diehard supporters with Glenn Beck and Mark Levin are telling us, okay? They're telling us in their common core math that winning one state, coming up, uh, everything is all, don't pay any attention to what happened in the Northeast. You know, we had a run of six states for Donald Trump. That's not important. What's important is Indiana, okay? So one state is more important than six. Well, you know, it could be if it was a big state like California, but they keep telling us that it's all about the delegates, don't they? So what Ted Cruz and company are telling us is that 172, which is the number of delegates that were up for grabs with these six states, 172 delegates is greater than 57. That's common core math, folks. Or if you want to put all six of them together with New York, 267 delegates 
is not as important as 57 delegates. That's the way they're going to spend this in their desperation, in their quixotic quest and that they will not give up. It is absolutely incredible to me that they won't that they won't give up on this. Now, all of the delegates from yesterday have not been allocated. I think it's important to note that Donald Trump won every county of every state yesterday. Let me say that again. He won every county of every state. Now, whether or not you like him, that's the reality, okay? Let's get real here. Now, in Pennsylvania, there's 71 delegates that are up, but only 17 of them go to the person that the voters pick. Then they have this little game, okay? Even though you win every county of every state, five, six states, okay? You still have to play these little delegate games that the GOP is doing. It's kind of like, you know, Mother May I. Oh, you didn't say Mother May I go to the back of the line, okay? That's the kind of games the GOP plays because, as they pointed out in Colorado, when our reporters, Rob Dew, went there, talked to the people that had been at the Colorado, quote-unquote, election without voters, Ted Cruz says, hey, we had 60,000 people vote. Well, you're really. And you had voted on who? Okay, you voted on people that got up and had 10 seconds to talk about whether or not for a particular candidate, but they played those kinds of games in Colorado. And as one guy said, hey, I've been coming to these things for decades. I've never seen anything as stupid as this. I've never seen anything like this. Another lady said, I asked one of the GOP establishment, why did you do it this way? Nobody knew about this. Very few people knew about this. Only 60,000 people in Colorado. That's pretty small. And he goes, well, you know, we don't want the wrong people to show up. They don't want the wrong people to vote. They don't want you to know who you're voting for. So on the Pennsylvania ballot, you've got these People at the top that you do know, like Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, John Kasich, but at the bottom you've got all these other names that you don't know that are different in every district. And you're not allowed to know who they're loyal to either, because that would, that would mess up the establishment game, wouldn't it? Here's the interesting thing, though. Okay, so Donald Trump wins by a, a huge margin in Pennsylvania. He got uh, between like 58 and 67% in the, in the states yesterday. And I don't remember which one Pennsylvania was. But anyway, he won 17 delegates because he overwhelmingly had a landslide in the popular vote. And yet these 54 delegates are still available. The interesting thing, I think, though, is that of those 54, 39 of them told ABC News they will support Trump on the first ballot of the Republican convention. Now, he didn't get all of them. But he got the vast majority of those, okay? That's about 80% of the uh, people who are remaining there. So even that little game is not working too well for them anymore. Now, Ted Cruz is going to make a major announcement today. I saw this a couple of hours ago, and I thought, wow, is he coming to his senses? Is he going to say, you know what, folks? I need 110% of the delegates remaining, even in my mind. I can't do that, okay? No, the Canadian didn't do that. He didn't come to his senses. No, no, he is playing the political equivalent a fantasy football, okay? He's picking all the players for his fantasy administration, for his fantasy presidential campaign. That ain't gonna happen, Ted, okay? Now, it's interesting to me that he's going to pick Carly Fiorina. Because remember, they said that uh, as people were speculating, what's going on? And this was a couple hours ago. They said, well, an aide to Carly Fiorina confirmed that Fiorina was being vetted by the Cruz campaign. Vetted. Well, I would have thought maybe they might have vetted her last summer when a cruise super PAC that spent a total of $536,000 for the quarter for three months spent 500000 of the 536000 they spent. 500000 of it went to Carly Fiorina and her campaign. And the FEC said, what's going on? <laughs> would you send us a letter explaining this to us? And as I've said, I would like to see that explanation because it makes absolutely no sense to me at all. And if you're going to pick a woman because you've got problems with women, and that's the real issue, I'll talk about that in just a second. If you're going to pick a woman, like we're saying, why would you pick Hillary Clinton? Or why would you pick Carly Fiorina? We have a lot of women in this country who could do the job and do it really well. But not those two folks, not those two, not Hillary, not Carly. When Carly was CEO of HP, which is her big resume issue, okay? You know the Peter principle where you keep going up and up and up until you get to a level of incompetency and fail? That was her HP CEO job. 
When she was a CEO at HP, the stock fell like it was a Greek bank, okay? You know, the Greek banks, when they had to close them all last summer, wasn't it last summer? Maybe, yeah, I think it was last summer, not two years ago. They had to close all the Greek banks and their stocks tanked 50, 60 percent. That's what Carly Fiorina did for Hewlett Packard. Here's what the issue is for Ted Cruz and why he's doing this, why he's engaging in his fantasy football league issue picks, okay? There was something that came out just before the primary yesterday from Brown University. They did a poll. They found that in Rhode Island, 90% of the female voters rejected Senator Ted Cruz. He was doing the worst of any candidate, Republican or Democrat, with women. We keep hearing people saying, oh, you know, women hate Ted, uh, Donald Trump. No, they hate Ted Cruz, especially in Rhode Island. 90% of the female voters rejected Ted Cruz, okay? And remember that in these elections, not only did Trump win every county and every state, when you look at these demographics, especially places like Rhode Island, he won every demographic. And I'm not talking about just uh, male and female, things like that. No, when they broke people down, said, what are your political stances? Are you very conservative? Are you conservative? Are you moderate? Okay. He won all of those. And he won the very conservative and the conservative people more than he did the moderates, even. Donald Trump did. And so what do the cruisers say? Oh, one other issue as well. Okay. This is something that happened March 30th. So this is about a month old. Ted Cruz launches a woman's coalition, okay, as part of his feud with Trump. He was trying to portray Trump as anti-woman. So he's going to portray himself as pro-woman. So he gets his Goldman Sacker, uh, his Goldman Sacker, his Goldman Sachs wife, okay, I guess we could call her a Goldman Sacker. Uh, he gets her and he gets Carly Fiorina and they create a woman's coalition. Hasn't worked out too well because after that woman's coalition, a month later, he still had 90% of the female voters rejecting Ted Cruz. So now he's going to pick Carly Fiorina as his VP. He had women for Cruz. That's a small group, his wife and Carly, who got a half a million dollars from one of his super PACs, okay? So this is where he is. Now, we're hearing from the Mark Levins and the, the talking points that uh, the, the Glenn Becks and the Mark Levins are saying is that eh, this doesn't matter. This is the Northeast. And even though they have all these uh, delegates and everything, eh, he's not going to win these states. So what do you want? You want a candidate who can't win the South like Ted Cruz? You want a candidate who can't win the, win the Northeast like Ted Cruz? You want a candidate who has only won some caucuses in the Midwest and one or two primaries? I don't think so. I think you want a candidate who can play nationally. I think you want a candidate who can take it to the base of his opponent, the Northeast into California. And of course, that's the key. Coming up is California. So when we look at the, when we look at the numbers of this, it, it really, really doesn't make sense. Now we're going to come up to a commercial break here. When we come back, I'm going to spend some time on Donald Trump's America First foreign policy, because I think what he said and what people say about it is very instructive. We're also going to take a look at the Dennis Haster thing. We've been playing the untouchables theme with that. The fact that he is going to jail for 15 months, I think, is an outrage. Not because he's going to jail for 15 months. No, he should go to jail for much, much longer than that for the crimes that he did against minors. No, he's not going to jail for that. He's going to jail for financial crimes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're going to go to some of the callers that wanted to talk to Roger Stone. Still on the line, we've got uh, Joshua and Kim. Hang on the line. I'm going to go to you in just one moment. Uh, before I do, I want to let you know about our new sale on InfoWars Select Storable Food, 30 to 40% off. It's a huge discount on storable food. And again, when we say it's storable, it is storable for 25 years. That's the shelf life. First quality food, first quality packaging, and of course, it comes in resealable bags that you can reseal uh, once you open it up. That's not going to maintain the 25-year freshness at that point, but until you unseal it, you can keep it on your shelf for 25 years. All of it made in America, top-notch, select, storable food you can get right now, 30 to 40% off. 
Save yourself from price increases not only on storable food, but on real food by taking advantage of this while we have this in stock, while this uh, special is going on. We also have Anthroplex back in stock, and you can make sure that you don't run out of any of our products by signing up for auto ship. You can get 10% off anything that you schedule. Pick the frequency at which you want it uh, reship, the quantity and the frequency. We want to make this a win-win situation, so we offer you a discount of 10%. When you help us to manage our inventory. So you can make sure you never run out of stock on the products that you use. And we have Anthroplex now back in stock for anyone who wants to try that. Anyone who wants to sign up for auto ship. Now going to our callers, uh, let's go to Joshua in Georgia. Joshua, thank you for holding. Yes, thank you, David, for taking my call. Long time listener. God bless you guys for everything that you're doing. Well, thank you. Um, I have a Yes, I have a quick question. Um, actually, actually, two questions, but uh, the first one transitions to the second. Uh, on NBC the other day, um, Donald Trump was being interviewed in the morning in New York, and there was a question that was asked. I was a little bit thrown off by it. I have a friend of mine who is a Ted Cruz supporter. He gave this to me and said, explain uh, this about Donald Trump, and that's what I was going to ask Roger Stone. Is, is the question was, do you plan on raising taxes on the rich? And Donald Trump did actually respond, yes, I do, including myself. And there was no real explanation on that. I wasn't sure if there was uh, anything that could be expounded upon to make that more clear. Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to try to defend every policy that Donald Trump did. I am not uh, going to defend any, every policy that everybody, anybody puts out there. And quite frankly, if you're talking about increasing taxes, I, I think we ought to go back and look at it because Donald Trump is saying, hey, we need to look at What's going on with NAFTA? That's a bad deal. We're losing a lot of money, uh, and we need to renegotiate or abort that. Remember that the income tax came in, and they took down tariffs to, to try to equal that out back in 1913. If we want an America first tax system, I think we need to go back to the tax system that Thomas Jefferson instilled in his first administration. What he did, and he talked about this, it is look at his second inaugural address. Thomas Jefferson said, by eliminating useless offices, I have been able to eliminate all internal taxes. So you can ask, what laborer, what farmer, what mechanic knows the tax man? Nobody, okay? The government brought down to its constitutional size can be run off of tariffs. And that's the way we ought to do it. Oh, that's protectionism, they say. No, it's not. And it's no more protectionism than we should have. I think that's the way that we ought to run our tax system. I'm not really interested in what any of these candidates have to say about the income tax. This happens, all they ever talk about in the debates, uh, Joshua, is they'll ask them, what rates do you want to have and what are your different brackets? And you know what? That is just simply rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. So I don't I don't really care when they talk about that. Donald Trump says he wants to raise taxes on the rich. The rich aren't going to pay any taxes. We've seen that. When they put in the income tax in 1913, it started at 1%. And, you know, 99% of Americans didn't pay any income tax the way they had the brackets set up. We need to get back to a system where we get rid of the income tax completely, okay? We can do that. We only need to reduce the government to the size that it was about five or six years ago. That's something that Harry Brown pointed out when he ran for president as libertarian. He said, could you live with a government that was the size it was five or six years ago if you had no income tax? Could you, Joshua? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I understand. And um, I wanted uh, to, to ask the second question, and I'm actually glad I'm, I'm asking you, David. I, I know you're very, very educated on, on history and these matters. Um, uh, the, the next question I had is concerning our U.S. military. Um, I believe it's going to be night and day difference. If, if we see on Hillary as president versus Donald Trump as president, oh, yeah. um, what, is, what, is your, what does your gut tell you uh, concerning where the direction of our military is going, considering Obama's been shrinking it massively? Um, there's really no solid direction that I've seen. Obviously, they're trying to expand wars and shrink our military, which is detrimental to the country. So I'm glad you asked that, Joshua. We're going to talk about that when we come back. We're going to look at what Donald Trump said about his America first foreign policy. Can you imagine if we would have a foreign policy that would put America first? You know, that was our first American foreign policy to put America first. We'll talk about that when we come back. Thank you, Joshua. Stay up. Stay with us, Kim. I'll get back to you as well. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're going to talk about Donald Trump's foreign policy, the reactions to it, and what he had to say. Our last caller, Joshua from Georgia, had a question directly related to this. What 
do we see happening with the military if Hillary Clinton were to win or if Donald Trump were to win? Well, I think we can get some insights based on what he has to say here today. But before we do that, uh, Kim's been waiting a long time. Kim from Wisconsin, I believe. Go ahead, Kim. Uh, give us your question. Um, if a plane does not fly, it cannot spread poison. If your boss is bad, he can be fired. If bad men are in tanks under the ground, do not let them out. It is time to arrest them. Why would we let them continue? To let them continue, is that not insanity? Yeah, I think it is. But, uh, you know, the, the question is, how do we do that? You know, how do we do that? Do we, do we grab guns and do we march into the Capitol building and start shooting? Because if we do that, we lose the moral high ground, don't we? You know, we've got four boxes that we can use. One of them is the cartridge box. But before we use that, we need to use the soap box. We need to use the ballot box. And most importantly, the one that I think is the most neglected is the jury box. One of the things that we can do is, first of all, play defense and make sure that we don't allow our fellow citizens to be locked up for non-crimes, whether it's at the state, local, or federal level. Okay, the other thing that we need to do is uh, we need to, as you're doing right now, we need to get on a soapbox. We need to educate each other because until we have a critical mass, it's not going to work to use force. And I think once we have a critical mass, I don't think you're going to need the ballot box. We need to keep that in reserve. I think it's there as a, uh, a threat of mutual destruction, you know, in the same way that we had nuclear weapons. And fortunately, so far, we haven't used them. Of course, we're starting up the Cold War again. That's what the criminals are trying to do. But uh, in the first Cold War that we had, we were able to keep either side from firing because of the threat of mutual destruction. That is what the Second Amendment is about. I've been at many uh, demonstrations where the protesters are exercising their First and their Second Amendment combined. We get called terrorists. We get called, <laughs> uh, some of us have been arrested. Uh, they've arrested a lot of people that were at the Bundy standoff. They should not have been arrested. Uh, but Right now, at this point, I think what we do is we have to have fully informed juries, and we need to make sure that they get a jury trial. And if we got only one person in a jury trial, they could get these people out of jail eventually. And now they're being held for an inordinately long amount of time. But I don't know. What did you? What would you want to do? How would you arrest people for treason? Um, once you start naming names that you're going to arrest or simply arrest one of them, I think the rest would fall and crumble. I don't think they're real men. I think they would just, I think every, and, and the others would also turn on them instantly. I think their whole deck of cards would crumble. Well, that's true. I, I think I think that, though, I mean, we look at somebody who is a a war criminal like Henry Kissinger. He was just here in Austin this uh, yesterday. Henry Kissinger is still going around giving speeches and pontificating about world government. Uh, this is a guy who is a recognized war criminal. He has to avoid going to certain countries because he'll be arrested in some countries. So, you know, it, it, is, it is a troubling situation to see criminals walking about freely. And we're going to talk about Dennis Hastert in a moment, but uh, I, I wish I had a better answer for you. I know that we can't do that unilaterally. I know that we've got to get a mass of people together. And I have some optimism that people are starting to wake up to the games that are being played with the electoral system, with the ballot box on both the Democrat side and the Republican side. But we need to keep people focused on liberty. And sometimes the best thing you can do is to focus on the positive aspects. And I think other things will start to fall into place. When you look at counterfeit money for many years until they started changing the currency so rapidly, what they would do to teach bank tellers how to spot the bad criminal counterfeit money is they would show them what a real bill looked like. And I know it's not a real bill. I know it's coming from the Federal Reserve. But they would show them what a real uh, Federal Reserve note looked like, if you will. Okay, And once they knew that, once they really had that burned into their mind and they could feel that and they knew what it looked like, then when they saw the counterfeit, they knew it immediately. Our goal... And this is where we're so far away from doing anything. Right now, the American people value the counterfeit of safety more than they do liberty. They desire their rulers to hand them safety. They're not even asking for liberty. Once we realize what the authentic thing is, once we realize the principle that people built this country on is liberty, 
then we'll have an opportunity to do some real reform because then people will start looking for the mechanisms by which they can get free, not clamoring for safety from their masters. And that's what we have right now. Right now we have the mindset of a slave. And until we focus on liberty, we're never going to arrest these people. We're never going to lose that mindset of slavery. Thank you, Kim. I want to go and I want to finish the answer that I started to give to, to Joshua, and I didn't have time. And I think that is found... He said, what, what's going to happen with, what's the military going to look like under these different presidents? Or what's our foreign policy going to look like? And we had Donald Trump make a foreign policy speech today. And I'll start here with this characterization. It's a quote that was on the BBC. Aaron David Miller, they say he's a former advisor to Republican Democrat administrations. This is the way he characterized Donald Trump's foreign policy speech. He said it was a perfect storm of isolationism, muscular nationalism, with a dash of pragmatism and realism. I looked at that and I thought, is he being critical? <laughs> I mean, I want to look at that as like, I think that's great. You know, when they say isolationism, I mean, remember that when Donald Trump repeats the phrase, America first, we're going to put America first, we're going to put America's interests first, okay? That was America's first foreign policy. Our first foreign policy was what George Washington articulated when he said, we're going to stay clear of perpetual wars in Europe. We're going to stay clear of entanglements with foreign countries, okay? That was our first American policy, and it put America's interests first. But now, that is considered to be isolationism. It's not isolationism. No, we were for trade with people. Okay, And that doesn't mean we let them manipulate currencies. That doesn't mean that we let foreign multinational corporations manage our economy with a phony trade deal and call that free trade. No, it means real free trade. It means real free trade, not managed trade, not managed by multinational corporate lobbyists. So, you know, they want to call that isolationism. No, it's true, genuine, authentic free trade, not the phony free trade that the GOP and the establishment leaders of the Democrats are selling us as well. We talk about muscular nationalism. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with pragmatism? What's wrong with realism? You know, our foreign policy has not been pragmatic. It has not been realistic. It's not been even legal. They talk about who is this foreign policy team? Well, they say the team is led by Republican Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama who has helped to shape Mr. Trump's policies. That's the BBC. I think that's a great thing. Remember, it was Jeff Sessions, who when he was talking to Leon Panetta, uh, he's been CIA director, but he was also, at the time, he was um, defense secretary. And he said, uh, what are the conditions that you're going to commit the military? And Panetta says, well, we would talk to the UN, we would talk to NATO, and he goes, well, wait a minute, you were a congressman once. Don't you know what the Constitution says? I can't believe what I'm hearing. You wouldn't consult Congress first? No, we would let you know what we decide to do after we talk to the UN, after we talk to NATO, okay? That man who has a problem with Leon Panetta, Senator Sessions, is now the main advisor to Donald Trump. That is great, I think. He's the only presidential candidate that Jeff Sessions has ever endorsed. And he's been working with him on these phony trade treaties. He's been working with him on defense and foreign policy issues since last summer. Now, let's talk about some of the things that Donald Trump said in his America First foreign policy. Uh, CNN and all these people, they can't believe they put America First in, in quotes. They say uh, he's laid out his vision for a foreign policy that will put America First. He's vowed to shake the rust off of America's foreign policy. He says, my foreign policy will always put the interests of American people and American security first. See, CNN and the BBC and the GOP and Democrat establishment have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. That's what an American president ought to do. He ought to put the interests of the American people first. And this is something that I think Donald Trump is authentic on. He's been talking about this since the late 80s, early 90s. He went on to pan the Iran nuclear deal. A centerpiece of Obama's foreign policy claimed the president has, quote, weakened our military by weakening our economy. Now, when Joshua from Georgia asked me what the military is going to look like under Hillary Clinton or under Donald Trump, let me tell you, Donald Trump understands that if you have a weak economy, you're going to have a weak military. If you have a weak economy, you're going to have a weak country in general. We have won every war since the Civil War by having an overwhelming capacity to wage war, okay? An overwhelming 
economy. That is a key component of victory. If you have a weak, ineffective, impotent economy, that's what you're going to have, an impotent military. And so he understands this, and that's why he says our NATO allies, our foreign allies and Asian countries are going to have to shoulder their load of the defense. He said this many times, and he's made the point himself. He said, look, you know, if we're going to be, in my term, I think you ought to use, is we're going to, if we're going to be the unpaid mercenaries of the world, if we're going to be the world's policemen and not get paid for doing it, I don't want, to, I don't want America to be the world's policemen, okay? But we certainly can't afford to do it if we are going to bear the financial burden as well. And he says the reality of it is that if South Korea and Japan and countries who can afford to pay for their defense, like European countries, if they don't pay for their defense, if we do it all, we will eventually collapse. And then they'll have to pay for their defense. But who will defend us? Will the Saudis? <laughs> Will the Saudis defend us when our economy collapses, when our military subsequently collapses? Of course they won't. And then he goes on to start talking about Secretary of State Clinton. And CNN says, well, he sought to wrap former Secretary of State Clinton in his criticism of the Obama administration. Is that unfair? Is that unfair to include the Secretary of State in the foreign policy of Obama? Of course she should be included. It's very much Every much a, a part of her foreign policy as it is Obama. She was involved with the catastrophes that we've had in Libya and in Syria and other places, okay? She wants to take uh, credit for being Secretary of State. Let's give her the full credit for being Secretary of State. Let's look at what she did as Secretary of State. Let's look at that very closely. And that's one of the reasons why many people on the left don't, cannot support her. It's because of what she did as Senator, as uh, for what she did as Secretary of State. So he referred to the legacy of the Obama-Clinton interventions, yes, and they have created weakness, confusion, and disarray. Absolutely. Now he goes on to say he's going to be working very closely with our friends in the Muslim world, which are all at risk for violent attacks, but he says they must also be good to us. It is no longer going to be one way. It's going to be a two-way street. And he goes on to say, and this is the this is the take home money quote, guys. He says, we will no longer surrender this country or its people to the false song of globalism. Yes. Let me repeat that again. Donald Trump said today in his America First foreign policy, we will no longer surrender this country or its people to the false song of globalism. We will not turn them over to international agreements that tie us up and bring America down. Now, that should be pulled out and held up like a quote from Patrick Henry, folks. That is a great quote. We're not going to surrender our country to the song of globalism, to international agreements that tie us up and bring America down. I think he's authentic on that. I disagree with Donald Trump's emphasis. I, as I said before, I think the purpose of the American government has to be to secure individual liberty. But at the international level, and I really believe that that focus really should be done locally, and it has to be something that lives in the hearts of the American people. If we don't value liberty, we won't stand for it, okay? We won't stand up for it. But at the international level, what the what the central federal government was created for, for foreign policy, to protect this country from other countries. When we're talking about international trade, when we're talking about foreign policy, when we're talking about when we're going to go to war and how we're going to fight that war, that is something that truly is the responsibility of the American president. And quite frankly, I haven't heard American president Talk about these issues, the false song of globalism, international agreements that tie us up and bring America down. That's better than Reagan, folks. A lot better than Reagan. Reagan talked about individual liberty. He talked about freedom. But he didn't talk about how we are being destroyed by globalism, by international agreements. We have now seen in the intervening 40 years what that has done to us. And I think we need to do something about this. Now he goes on, I'll read you another couple of quotes here. Under a Trump administration, no American citizen will ever again feel that their needs come second to the citizens of a foreign country. 
He says, I will not send our finest into battle unless necessary, and I mean absolutely necessary, and I will do so only if we have a plan for victory with a capital V. I believe he would do that as well. Every politician says that. But I believe that uh, Donald Trump is authentic on that. Finally, I'll read you one more quote. We've been embroiled in several costly, protracted conflicts, and the world has become more complex, more unstable, and more dangerous. Yes. Yes. And Hillary Clinton's foreign policy has left us weak, confused, and in disarray. That is a stark, clear difference between Donald Trump and the rest of the field. And I would include in the rest of the field people like Ted Cruz, who has just talked in generality. And I've not gotten any sense that he has an America first foreign policy. As a matter of fact, his wife, his globalist connections with the CFR has been working on the North American Union. He is a shell for the very people that uh, Donald Trump is taking on with his foreign policy. Now, in the time I've got left, I want to talk about Dennis Hastert. Dennis Hastert was since sentenced today to 15 months in prison in a hush money case. Listen to the way the media is portraying this. They say former House Speaker Dennis Hastert was sentenced Wednesday to 15 months in prison in his hush money case by a judge who called him a serial child molester and ordered him to enroll in a sex offender treatment program. Folks, he's not going to jail because he is a child molester. He should go to jail because he's a child molester. We have a statute of limitations, unfortunately, on molesting children in this country. And I don't know why we have that statute. One of the victims of this man who is now in his 50s, the victim is now in his 50s, he says, I wanted you, he testified there, he said, I wanted you to know the pain and the suffering that he caused me then and still causes me, still causes me. There is no statute of limitation on the suffering of the children. There should be no statute of limitation on, the pers on prosecuting the criminals who cause that lifelong suffering. But unfortunately, there is. If you were to look at this, if you were to say that he's going to jail for 15 months, we know at least five people on record that he abused, minors that he abused. So what is he getting? Three months for each of these victims? Okay, but no, it's even worse than that. He's not going to jail for a real crime. He's going to jail for a non-crime. And we're going to talk about that when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Wednesday, April 27th, 2016. I'm David Knight, and we have one more segment to cover. And I want to finish talking about Dennis Hastert, and I want to talk about a hard lesson that has been learned by some Christians. You know, we say that experience is an expensive school, but it's the only one a fool will attend. Don't be fooled by the civil asset forfeiture laws that were put in place by the Reagan administration. And I want to tell Christians in this story from the Washington Post exactly what happened to that. But before we go back to these two stories, I want to let you know about our sale that we have on select storable food at InfoWarsStore.com. You know, food prices are going up around the world. Now is the time to start getting prepared. These select foods have a shelf life of 25 years. They're all made in the USA. You won't find any finer packaging than you have on the select storable food. An unprecedented discount here, 30 to 40% off the max you're going to see anywhere in terms of a discount. Right now, all select storable food, 30 to 40% off at InfoWarsStore.com while supplies last. Now, to finish up on Dennis Hastert. As I said, it would be an absolute travesty of justice if this man were to only go to jail for 15 months for abusing at least five people. Okay, three months a person? These people have suffered their entire lives for this? But no, he's not being sent to jail for that. And all the news articles make it sound like that's the case. Just as I said, well, the judge said, you're a serial child molester. Uh, you need to get sex offender treatment. Yeah, yeah, this treatment needs to be behind bars so he can't do it again. Because we have the statute of limitations, he's not going to jail for that. And because we have the statute of limitations, it allows people like pedophile priests to continue doing this, these serial child molesters, and get away with it and avoid jail sentences. How did they get Dennis Hastert? Why is he going to jail for 15 months? He's going to jail for a non-crime. He's going to jail because he took his money out of his bank account and he did it in a way that it wouldn't get reported to the federal government. And they called that structuring, structuring. This was something that was set up first to look at deposits and say, we don't want drug dealers putting money in the bank. 
okay, and structuring their deposits uh, so that it doesn't get noticed because they're going to report large deposits of cash into the bank to the federal government so they can look at you as a drug dealer. Okay, so they say, well, do, we don't want people to put it in just under the limit of 10000 or whatever. So if they make multiple deposits just under the limit so it doesn't get reported, we're going to say they're structuring those deposits. And there's been a lot of abuse of people who are small businesses who had no criminal actions, had no intent to try to hide anything from the federal government as if they have a right to know what we're doing with our cash. They don't. And they've gone to jail. And so now it's gotten to the absurd extreme. That somebody who takes their own money, which has already been deposited, which has already been looked at, takes their money out as he was doing to pay off one of these guys' hush money, then he goes to jail for 15 months. Now, talking about cash, if you have cash, of course, you are going to be a criminal. You're going to be the victim, I should say, of highway robbers, criminals that we call law enforcement officers in Oklahoma. This is a case that came out of Oklahoma, out of Muskogee County, and these Okies from Muskogee pull over a guy who had just finished a tour with a Christian band, and he was taking the band's proceeds. They had gone around 19 cities across the United States selling tickets, taking money as a collection for a church, for an orphanage back in Burma. They get pulled over. They get robbed, okay, by the police. And then the police come back and say, well, after it gets publicized by the Washington Post, after the Institute of Justice takes it up as a pro bono case, they come back and say, well, we couldn't meet the burden of proof in the criminal case or the civil case, so we're going to let you go. Look, there is no burden of proof of civil asset forfeiture. They try it as a civil case because they confiscate your money, make you sue them. And we have the Obama administration, which made a big deal about this, saying they're going to reform it, and now they're coming in and doing deals with the police department, just like they did with the insider trading in Congress. Make a big deal of reform, then come back in, ignore it, and it's business as usual. Join us tonight, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.